Okay, I would, would like to call this meeting of the Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board to order, if I could. If everyone could take their seats. <laughs> okay, um, I believe there are a few changes in the agenda. The items still stand, but there are a few little changes of what will happen tonight, so we'll go over those as necessary. Uh, I'd like your motion to accept Arts Planning Consultant meeting notes. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, have you all had a chance to review the May 1st uh, Planning Board minutes? Yes. Any uh, changes, amendments? Could I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm not aware of any correspondence or announcements. Uh, anyone else? Preservation, you want to do the scheduling? Ah, scheduling. As you recall, one of the training sessions we were planning to do was on July 31st, historic preservation. And I want to know if people are still uh, available for that. Yes. I think so. Okay. There's also a possibility, we won't have to do this until the 19th, uh, our next June meeting, that we may be a couple things we may want to roll over to that meeting just so that our August meeting doesn't keep us here until September. Uh, but that's something we can consider at that time. Okay. Uh, we have a few minutes before our first public hearing. Like five of them. Okay, there's one uh, one non item that's not on the agenda that you could accomplish in the next couple of minutes. Uh, this is the John Lyons project, the proposed uh, law office at his residential location. Uh, the ZBA recently granted uh, the required variance that allows the class two home occupation to be uh, developed on a lot of less than, a less than conforming lot. Uh, consequently, the planning board needs to schedule a continuation of the public hearing on the special permit site plan. Uh, you uh, acted uh, on the 10th of January to continue that hearing to an indefinite date to be established once the ZBA acted. So the, uh, move, the situation tonight would be to schedule that continuation specifically uh, for the uh, night of uh, June, 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 uh, June 19th. 19th? Yes. yes. Okay, um, could I? 6.35. Second. Second. <laughs> I'm assuming it's going to be 6.35? 6.35. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right, now we have four minutes. Okay. We should have dragged out the discussion on that a little longer, I think. Yeah, there's, there's nothing else that you can act on. No. Okay. Well, I guess we sit here patiently and. Would you like me to sing? Oh, would, would you, Woody? <laughs> no, you wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. All right. Usually at the theater, don't they have like a cartoon at this point or something before the, <laughs> the main feature? Commercial. Oh, ten, dancing popcorn boxes and stuff? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Should I do a running commentary? <laughs> yeah, the first one is, well, we can't do it now because we're going to have revisions and things like that, I'm not going to say something. That'll at least drag it out a little bit. I, I, uh, yeah, we went on the site visit, they said they were going to have elevations, but I haven't seen the elevations yet. They said it's a very handsome, long, long building. Mm -hmm. All painted black. Would they like to share that with the rest of us? It's a combination of very handsome, long, painted black. I didn't know what to do with it, my mind. I'm looking forward to it. So you can expect to see it here. Can I do trim? 
the uh, <laughs> no way. <laughs> no way. I think I have to do one more minute. Did I mean, it's a but I'm not going <laughs> Okay. All right, we're ready for our first public hearing. And it's Daryl and Deirdre Solon, Way Road Special Use Permit and Site Plan Approval, continuation from May 1st, 2017, of conduct of combined public hearing on applications for special use permit and site plan review and approval under Town Code Chapter 125 zoning in the matter of the proposed construction of a single family dwelling and installation of related site improvements on an existing lot of record, being three acres, lot number one. Uh, within the rural countryside RC5 and water resources overlay districts and adjoining a certified agricultural district as all set forth on documents submitted on behalf of the applicant by the project engineer on March 10th, 2017 being classified by the planning board as type 2 under seeker. Mark. Feel free to take your time. <laughs> uh, good evening. So this is a, uh, does the board want to go through the entire application plan or the reason for the continuation was at the last week meeting when I uh, presented for uh, site plan special permit. Uh, this is just a construction of a single family residence on a previously approved lot. Um, while uh, the Solons were um, doing some clearing on the property, they were clearing some brush on the property and some uh, dead trees. They actually uh, disturbed some area that was within uh, 100 feet in the adjacent area of a, of, the of a stream on the property. And so subsequently, I uh, made application to this board uh, for a, a wetlands uh, disturbance permit. So those materials, uh, I, I submitted those materials. Um, are they looking around for those materials? Yeah, I'm uh, Gretchen. Wetlands permit application on Solon submitted? Yeah, last last Monday, or the, I did it three weeks in advance of the 19th. That's the one I believe I put in everybody's folders. So, so anyway, at that, at the last meeting uh, of our public hearing, we, and we had a, a site visit with the planning board, uh, you know, went through, uh, went through the application uh, for, you know, development of the single family residence and, you know, brought up the issue with, uh, with this disturbance in the wetlands. So I then subsequently filed an application for wetlands disturbance. And then since then, have also uh, looked at other um, other features on the site. Uh, I think Woody and Richard were out there. And so uh, originally, uh, there was a previously approved uh, sewage disposal system that was part of the original subdivision approval that was in this location here. And what that did is that actually drove the elevation of the, uh, of the, of the residence for that particular property. Um, did some additional soil testing and had the health department out there and found a, uh, a much more suitable location right near the building, which uh, allowed me to drop the building three feet in elevation uh, at the site. So it really uh, limits the amount of site disturbance, uh, changes the entire uh, uh, nature of the, uh, of, the of the development for the residents. And so uh, in, in addition to the um, <coughs> materials that I submitted for um, for wetland disturbance. I also, uh, there'll be an application that'll go to the Dutchess County Department of Health. Health Department's already been out and they witnessed the test holes, so there'll be uh, an application that's going to the Health Department uh, for uh, review and approval of individual water supply and sewage disposal. Mark, where would the expansion uh, area be that, for that? Uh, the expansion, hmm? it's, it's actually, uh, this, is a, this is a rare septic system. This is a, a, a rare septic system in, uh, in the town of Rhinebeck. It's, it's actually, we found uh, well-drained soils and it doesn't require any fill. So that uh, the actually the expansion area is going to be located. It's right where I have the uh, absorption field. That's it. Uh, the three laterals there, Eric, and you'll see that there's three right below that. So that's the expansion area right there. Okay. I was able to fit everything in a very small location. It's a small residence. It's only a two-bedroom residence, and so and they were it was all uh, sandy sand and gravel material. So it worked out really well for them. We're just having a little private conversation here, just sorting everything out. Okay. Did we ever get elevations for this uh, 
development with that project. We did. We did. They were just, you know, they there was, uh, you know, it's it's essentially it's a it's a Morton building, um, is the yeah, is the residence. And I did submit. Okay. There were small sketches that were with the original application. I don't have Solon's file with me. It was it was on an eight and a half by eleven. Okay. Okay. We we found the wetland application. Okay. And it's dated May twenty fifth. Is that? Yeah. I, 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 so the goal was to submit it three weeks in advance of the nineteenth. Of the nineteenth. Okay. And that and that that has happened. Okay. Right. And so it was my understanding that. We were, this was just a continuation of the public hearing. Correct. Correct. And then to the 19th. Correct. You are correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, actually, what you just said is, is basically the discussion we were having. Yeah. Um, oh, that's floor plan. It's not elevation. The board, the, the, the application for wetlands permit is pretty, pretty you know, self-explanatory. Uh, the board cannot accept this is uh, the, the application tonight uh, based upon you know, it time barred. Oh. It wasn't submitted two weeks beforehand. Right. So the board can accept this application on the 19th, at which point in time the board will have also scheduled the continuation of this public hearing. And the board is empowered in that uh, uh, this is really, this wetlands permit application is integral to the rest of the plan. The board is empowered at that time, if it so chooses, to waive the conduct of an additional public hearing uh, with respect to the wetlands permit application. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is the board could uh, continue the public hearing to the June 19th meeting and um, absent any unforeseen circumstances, wrap up this uh, at, the, at that meeting. Okay. And if I can also, and if you needed uh, building elevations, I, I have those. No, no, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't bring the file with me, but I'll, I'll forward that it information. Was, it's in the file. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Well, Mark, we do have a question. What, what was the nature of the disturbance? They pulled out some brush. They so the, it was uh, um, it was honeysuckle and you know just brush and and so uh, the excavator. Pulled it up, pulled up the brush. So there was some disturbing of the it ground. Was, all it was is, is just pulling the roots of the brush up. That was it. And so there is uh, there is silt fence out at the site. So I haven't played silt fence at the site, and just waiting for cleanup and to have it uh, uh, seeded and mulch and stabilized. It's actually stabilized right now. The weed growth has taken over, but uh, it'll be formally done. That's that was included in my application. And you're done with all the excavation? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I saw uh, what was uh, until you know for clearing until obviously until the. Uh, I saw what they ripped up. It looked like half of it was old dead. Yeah. Stuff. Yep. It was pretty minimal. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Any other questions from the members of the town of planning board? Any questions for Mark from the public? All right then. Could I hear a motion to continue this public hearing until the nineteenth? So moved. Second. Second. Any comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. And at that time, we can act on the wetland permit as well because of the nature of it's really a very, very minor uh, issue. I, I imagine the planning board would, you know, uh, the waive the hearing. Is, I, I've uh, requested the applicant have everything stabilized by, right. by that time. Okay, very good. I think, I think that we'll be in pretty good shape on the 19th to okay. All right, great. wrap this up. Okay. Mark, right, we'll thank you. All right, thank you very much. Six four, yeah, 640. All righty. Ready for our next <laughs> public hearing. Catherine Hoskins Fisher, uh, 595 South Mill Road, subdivision, plat approval, special use permit, and site plan approval. Conduct of combined public hearing on applications for subdivision plat approval under town code chapter 101, subdivision of land, and for special use permits and site plan review and approval under town code chapter 125, zoning, in the matter of a proposed lot line alteration between two lots, each remaining in excess of the minimum lot area requirement, and to the conversion and addition of an existing non-habitable, non-contributing structure into a three-bedroom dwelling and installation of related site improvements, including on-site well and SDS within the rural agriculture Cultural and Hudson River National Historic Landmarks Districts and the town's LWRA as subject of application for area variances pending before the ZBA being classified as an unlisted action under seeker. Uh, is there someone here to represent 
Ah. I am here dropping off just a couple of things. Oh, it is there. There should be an article. <laughs> should be not, let me know. Okay. This oh, is an updated EAF. Okay. Now, should I submit the, the ones for zoning separately? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. They're not bad. <laughs> Good evening. Um, yeah. Can I introduce the project further, or uh, if you feel or just field uh, questions. There's a few details you'd like to throw in there before uh, your presentation on the on what you're proposing to do, or your applicant, your client's proposing to do. Okay, so I'll just present the the proposal. Okay, um, there's an existing. Um, non-habitable structure on this site. As uh, was mentioned, um, there's two adjacent sites under the same ownership. Um, one is currently is undersized according to the 10 acre zoning, the other is larger. Um, we're proposing to uh, move the lot line so that they will both be compliant in size, uh, which is over 10 acres, and demolish the back portion of the existing non-habitable structure and um, <coughs> Rebuild it, slight, a little add, a little change in shape, but very very similar in scale. I can go over to square footages, et cetera. Um, and convert it into a residence. And to that end, it requires a septic system. The soils are not so kind there. They're clay, high water table, so it's a lot of fill. Um, but we found a nice area in the back that's, that's set down a ways um, where that fill will not be apparent as a huge mound. And that's really the gist of the, the project, besides, again, the specific the square footages and uh, exact acreage, et cetera, which, of course, I can get into. Okay. Um, Sharon and, I guess, Woody, did the site visit? Yep. Who would you care to report? Uh, I think it's a great, <coughs> I think it's a great uh, proposal, simply because that building has been sitting idle for a long time, and uh, it's a nice piece of architecture. And as the owner said when we were down there, the, the back portion, which is the newest portion, they're going to tear away and replace it because it was, I'll call it shoddy construction. <coughs> uh, I see no problems with it at all. I think it's the right thing to do and glad to see it come into play. No, I, I agree with uh, Woody. It's, uh, the building's been there, not forever, but a really long, long time. And it's just been sitting there vacant for decades at this point, and it'll be a nice enhancement to the road. And the building, as it looks from the road, it's an old carriage house, and that vernacular will still pretty much stay as it is. So it'll be a really nice enhancement. Okay, thank you. Um, we have heard from Dutchess County. It's a matter of local concern. Um, Town Conservation Advisory Board. Good evening, Robert Donaldson, Conservation Advisory Board. Uh, last Tuesday, we met with Woody and Sharon at the site, along with the owner and the architect. And um, <coughs> regarding the proposed demolition work on the rear section of the garage, along with modification, renovation work on the existing garage and installation of a well and sec septic system, the Waterfront Advisory uh, Committee does not find any issues or concerns under the applicable sections of the town's LWRP program. <coughs> Well, we ask that the um, owner follow policy 33 best practices during the demolition phase and the construction part of this project. Thank you. Uh, any questions uh, from members of the planning board? Uh, members of the public, anyone here comments or questions about this particular proposal? Okay, well, uh, one thing, uh, apparently a number of variances are required for this and it's my understanding the ZBA has not yet acted on those variances, so we're not in a position to do an <coughs> approval tonight, but we can uh, complete the secret process tonight. Um, and I guess the one question I have is since we're just waiting for variances, can we close the public hearing tonight? No, the application is technically, because the application Could, is technically not consistent. Until the variances are granted. Before you, it's not consistent with zoning. Okay. Until the variances are granted. But we could yeah. proceed with Seeker. You can proceed with Seeker, and uh, it's possible that uh, the ZBA may be actually waiting for you to proceed with Seeker. Oh. So there is a uh, there is a draft Seeker resolution. Okay. Uh, beyond that, um, with respect to the public hearing and uh, with respect to planning board decision on this application, 
uh, unless I've uh, misinterpreted the calendar, the uh, planning board will not be able to act on this until its July meeting. Uh, this planning board next meets on June 19th. I understand the ZBA would next meets on June 21st. So that would be the earliest possible date for a ZBA decision. So you've got two things before you. One is uh, I certainly recommend you uh, consider an act on the seeker resolution, which is a negative declaration under seeker, and schedule continuation of this hearing for the July 17th meeting. Okay. What I'm going to do is read a somewhat truncated resolution here. The Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board hereby acts as follows on a proposed action involving applications to the Planning Board for subdivision plat approval under Town uh, Code Chapter 101 subdivision of land and for special use permits and site plan review and approval under Town Code Chapter 125 zoning and an application to the ZBA for area variances relief from minimum setback requirements in the matter of this project. One, pursuant to the Planning Board's classification of the proposed action as an unlisted action under seeker determines upon its review of the short EAF Part 1 and its own completion of the annexed short EAF Part 2 in consideration of both the criteria for determining significance set forth at Title VI Part 617.7C NYCRR and pertinent coastal policy set forth within the town's LWRP that the proposed action as described above and involving no proposed development will cause no potential significant adverse impact on the environment and thus issues a negative declaration, determination of non-significance under seeker, okay. deeming an environmental impact statement not to be required and stating such will not be prepared. Uh, please delete the words and, and involving no proposed development. Ah, the action okay. is described above. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> Two, authorizes the chair to so execute the short EAF and directs the planning board clerk to distribute and file the executed determination of significance in the manner set forth within the seeker implementing regulations, Title VI, Part 617.12 NYCRR. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Could I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? Nope. I will poll the board. Richard? Aye. Woody? Aye. Garrett? Aye. Edna? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Melody? Aye. And I also vote aye. So that's done. All we're waiting for now are the variances. Uh, I would now like to have a motion to continue the public hearing to July 17th. At 635. At 635. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? No. Aye. Aye. Very good. So we'll see you on July 17th. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> Next public hearing. Elise Long and David Webb, 19 Russell Avenue, special use permits and site plan approval. Conduct of combined public hearing on applications for special use permits and site plan review and approval under <coughs> Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning in the matter of one, the proposed relocation, eliminating encroachment on adjacent Kopyshensky parcel and conversion with addition of an existing non-habitable contributing structure into a one-bedroom detached accessory dwelling unit with connection to existing water and SDS and two, the siting of a prefabricated 19 square foot storage shed on .189 acre parcel within the Rhinecliff Hamlet, Rhinecliff Overlay and Hudson River National Historic Landmarks districts and the town's LWRA being classified as a type two action under seeker. Okay. So, hello. We bought our property a couple of years ago, and we renovated, there's a house in front, this is our site plan, and there's a house in front that we renovated the last couple of years, and in the back there's a small, uh, uh, I call it the dollhouse, a small structure that's falling down. <coughs> it happens to be half on our neighbor, more than half on our neighbor's property. So we wanted to uh, fix it up before it falls down and make it usable structure. And so we're proposing to move the structure over to here, add a little path, line it up with our uh, driveway so we have a bigger open yard. And there was some question, I think, be from Edna, Edna or Eric about seeing it from the road and privacy. So we thought we would put a, a privacy hedge there and anywhere else that if people feel they need more of that. Um, there was a question I think you had about clearances from the, the borders, uh, setbacks, and I, I queried and said there wasn't a problem with that. Um, I think the other thing, there was a question I think we answered last time about the septic field. Um, septic field is here. And there are two tanks, so it, it is adequate for a three-bedroom. We were told by the, uh, the engineer who did the drawings, who consulted the guy who put that in about uh, 30 years ago, we think. And the other part was we wanted to get a little storage shed, which is here. 
I forgot about that. Oh, quick okay. question. You said it was more than ha built more than halfway on your neighbor's property. What yeah. makes you think it's yours? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, go ahead. No, I mean, all the assumptions were it's been used by that our the owner, a previous owner of our house, for fifty or sixty years. As is, it, is it on okay. the record of having been built by that owner? Or uh, there was someone living there. Uh, it's an old. Uh, it's probably a hundred. 20 years old. Eric, there are just um, a couple of things we need to resolve before we get to that state, okay. that, that issue, because I'm going to be asking you, and uh, I believe Edna both did the site visit in just a minute. Okay. There has been a question. A couple people have contacted our office, uh, neighbors, that they did not receive notification of, of this public hearing tonight. So basically what we're looking for, I think that you were given a list, I think Gretchen gave you a list of all the people, yes. and we basically just need to confirm that all those people were, were mailed. Sometimes things we just need to know that all those people were mailed notification of tonight's meeting. Well, I did print out what she sent me, <laughs> and I went through and checked through, and I, there were some doubles on it. Um, so if anybody didn't get it, I'm happy to do that, but I can show you who I sent it to. I think there were 50 names, and there were nine repeats. Okay. So we sent 41 letters. It was about 300 bucks of certified mail. Mm -hmm. So if people didn't get it, I don't know why. There was 41 mails. Yeah. And there was 41 names on the list. Okay. Taking away the doubles. The doubles are usually if somebody owns one more piece, one additional right. piece of property. And I did go through to double check. Okay. So I, here's here it is. <laughs> 40 people? What is the rule? 41 people. 41 people. Feet or something? Three, three. 500 feet. 500 feet on this? And people to move a shed. And, and in Rancliffe, you, the can, whole you can do that pretty quickly. And to, to put a little prefab shed so we can okay. yeah, oh, it's all right. We'll do it. Okay. But I can give you that, Gretchen. How many people didn't get it? Apparently, I, I received information that two people said they didn't receive it which they maybe didn't pick it up. I mean, any number of things could happen. All we, can, all we can ask of the applicant is that they certify that the list they were given, they did indeed mail it to it. They can't control whether or not someone actually got right. it. Right, and I, I did ask, I said, you know, sometimes like with grant applications, you can't send it to a P.O. box. So I did ask Gretchen, there's a lot of P.O. boxes here, mm -hmm. and said, you know, they'll pick it up. If they haven't picked it up, but they don't live here, I don't know what to do. Okay. And if anything gets returned, just send that to And I totally right. will, yeah. Okay. Okay. The next question is about the additional information. Yeah, I, th I think that. Um, we have a revised. Is that revised? Is this a, this is I think a revised site plan from the one we initially got with the we, application. Uh, we gave you the survey first right. with the indicated, and then just according to what you told us, it just went mm -hmm. down the list that you needed a stamped site plan from an architect or engineer. Mm -hmm. So the engineer did that after, and he revised it after we talked with you. Okay. So, okay. so this is this revised plan is just being submitted this evening. Yes. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, I, I did. And it's seeing the yeah. light of the day. <laughs> right. Okay. This is the first time you've seen it in this form. Okay. okay. And it includes uh, it includes water line, sewer line connections and the engineer stamp and setbacks. And, um, there, we understood there weren't any setbacks. Well, no, it, right it in proposed, proposed setbacks of the earlier improvements from property lines. Okay. Basically what you're proposing to do. Yes. So this is about 17, 17 plus, so 20, let's say 20 feet from there. This is about 4 feet. And then uh, this is actually, what's strange about this property, not strange, but makes it unique, is that the, the um, it's, when you look at the property, it looks like this, because that, that follows the natural curve of the land. And there's a, a shrubbery here that delineates that edge. There's a fence here, and then there's a drop off here. So it feels like this is actually the property line. That's one, rise, one reason it's kind of a skewed thing. It's actually a parallelogram so that this goes off into this neighbor. This neighbor owns both sides, mm -hmm. so this goes off into his, and this actually moves in here. Okay. Functionally, it's set up as a rectangle, but it's actually... It's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. There, okay. There's no water going to the new shed, right? Well, we're turn we are making it into a, like a third bedroom, so there will be water going so to it. Bathroom. Yeah. Bedroom and bathroom. Yeah. So what we asked for, Richard, was that the proposed 
water line serving the detached accessory uh, residents, as be well shown. as the connection to the sanitary <coughs> sewage system be, be shown. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll need that. So, okay, I think at this point, Eric and Edna, you did the site visit. Yes, um, we did. Would you care to report on your findings? Go ahead, Edna. Uh, well, to start with, uh, there were a number of questions. Uh, and when we were there, th I think there was still discussion going on about precisely where this structure was going to be moved. <laughs> true. Now, I don't think I have an updated site plan that shows it at the left side of the property. All no, I have don't. is the original one that we yeah, got. Yeah, that's why I was questioning that, whether yeah, it's yeah. a revised plan. So this, this was revised after you were there, and right. we just got it from David Ryder last week, came up and picked with, and then sent it to Greg. sent via email yeah. to everybody, because they didn't have any paper copies at that time. So we need paper copies. Yeah. Okay. But it was sent email. No, I, I, I did not I see it. No, it was sent today, wasn't it? Was it sent today? It wasn't today. It was last week when I got it. I know I have one. Please. I know I forwarded it. <clears throat> um, well, all right, so the, there was that issue. Anyway, uh, it needs to be two weeks before the meeting to be considered tonight. I'm just saying, as, as, a, as, a, as a rule, continuing application, any new submission, any modified submission has to be available two weeks before the public hearing. So this public hearing cannot be closed this evening on that basis. Okay, okay do you want me to continue? Yeah. Yeah, yes. Um, there had been some work done on this shed. Some of it was going to be changed. For example, upstairs there was a solid wall put in uh, on an outdoor area and we were told that that wall was going to actually come down and be replaced with an open railing wall. So we, we asked that there be a complete list of whatever construction changes were going to be, were going to take place plus some photos of the structure as it now exists so we could all understand what now exists and what changes were going to be made. And then the third issue is Eric, who is an engineer. Noted certain construction elements that at least to him did not seem to be in keeping with building code. And so again, we wanted to know exactly what was going to be done to this structure to take care of those issues. Could I just respond briefly to that? Because your advice was to call um, the building department and ask Ed Maddock or someone to come out and view the um, existing structure and say, is it up to code or not? I made a call to him. His response was he cannot come out or would not come out. That in the process of submitting the building construction plans, we would specify We'd address those issues and specify exactly the things that um, were pointed out. And the architect would specify the issues with the support structures around the window and the doors, which was, were pointed out. Um, and then that would be part of the permit approval process for the building construction plan. That's, okay. that's what Ed told me. Why, why is that our concern as opposed to the building department? Well, because work had already been done, we were asked to look at a structure, you know, we looked at it and it, see, and it seemed at least to Eric that there were issues that were not in keeping with the building code, so we wanted to make sure that they were attended to by some means, uh, and it sounds as like they have been attended to. Yeah. The, the building had been moved once uh, from, because it was built more than halfway on, on uh, the neighboring property, and it got moved, but did, still didn't get moved across the property line. So it had to be built, uh, re moved again, um, but meanwhile the construction that had gone on, uh, it was put on a foundation that frankly I don't see how it could possibly be to code. Um, the uh, structural uh, carpentry that was done was, um, I mean it was, it was uh, not even close to what would be code. So. Yeah, I mean, it had to be addressed. Yes, and that would be addressed. It has to go into a new foundation. That would be part of specifying the foundation. We talked to David Ryder, the engineer, about what foundations would be 
uh, up to code. So that would be built into the building plan. Um, the other thing is the context here, you have to understand that I, I actually was uh, the anxious one about the building falling down. I didn't think it was going to make another season of uh, freezing and um, unfreezing. There are pictures we have where you see the entire bottom is just missing and the uh, support beam on the bottom is all rotted out. So it was a matter of urgency of getting the building on something to keep it to make it through the winter. Uh -huh. And that urgency created problems plus some naivety we had about the process for getting approved for everything. So. Um, uh, I'll also say it's been a work in progress. It, it didn't start out to be this, but once it became so complicated, we had originally started out just wanting to make it a usable space, prop it up, and, and we had tried to work out something with our neighbor with easements and it just wasn't happening. So we thought it'd be better just to move it off. So once we started to talking to you all, we thought, well, if we're going to put this much time and this much energy and this much money in it, we should make it really useful. So that's where we thought we would make it a guest house and right. a third bedroom for us. So that's where it started. It didn't start out like this. It's, it's evolved like Topsy, you know? Uh, there was one other item that was discussed. There's a circular stairway at one yeah. side of the building and uh, there was a, uh, a suggestion and I think an agreement that it would be moved to the back of the Absolutely. building rather than the front of the yeah. building. Yeah. My, my architect's been traveling this month, but sh she said absolutely that's fine. But we still, in, in, in some response to that, part, part of the reason that we talked about that originally was because as it's depicted now, it rests aligned with the front plane of, of the historic building. And we thought moving it to the back would, would eliminate that long front. But we still have no response from SHPO, to my knowledge, in terms of their referral. No. So, um, it, it, certainly from our perspective, it would help to move it back, but they may disagree. SHPO may have a, okay. another opinion entirely. Okay. And we, and we haven't heard from SHPO. We also haven't heard yet back from the town historian. But, um, was, the, was the addition of the shrubs because we didn't want to see this shed when we were all done? Is that what it was? There was no request for shrubbery. We just uh, was something about privacy that we. You you had suggested well, that you did, it it would be seen from the street if, it were, moved. if it were moved. So we just said, well, let's just make it so it's not visible. Is we're at the end of a dead end street, mm -hmm. and it's you don't the driveway. Want to see it? <laughs> there was no request from the two of us. No, okay. it wasn't a request. It was just sealed. a suggestion. You know, a suggestion. So I thought, fine, I get that. Okay, no, I was just trying to understand. Okay. And we've, I don't believe we've had any response yet from the village water department since this involves the village water department, a slight change and some different hookups and all, we need, to, we need to hear from them as well. I'm sure it's just maybe a technicality, but we do need to hear from them. Um, do we need anything to make that happen or we just wait until it does happen? I may wish to inform them of what you're intending to do because you are changing the hookups at right. this site uh, and basically putting another building on their system. I don't imagine that it's going to require more water use probably or anything like that. But I think that they do like to be informed of exactly what's happening within their system. It's, it's, it's possible system. the engineer made that call, so okay, I'll you, check you with you. You want to check yeah, with that? I will. Um, they won't be the new building with the existing feed on their existing building? I'm not exactly sure how it will be handled or where it will be handled. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. And, and whether or not they consider the existing feed to be a two-bedroom feed or a three-bedroom oh, feed. Okay. Yeah. You know, that's a question also. Fair enough. It's just, okay, Edna, Eric, anything else? No. Okay. I think on to the Conservation Advisory Board. Good evening again. I'm filling in for Ryan. Ryan submitted the report on this project, and based on what Ryan uh, informed me, the CAB finds no environmental issues uh, regarding uh, this project. At this point, I'd like to open it up to the public. Uh, comment, questions, anything they'd like to, uh, yes. If you could come up here and to the microphone and that way everyone can hear and please identify yourself. Hi, um, <clears throat> I'm Susan Mitchell. I live um, directly north of this property. There is a slight, um, easement belonging to Alexis Lee 
between us, but I'm right in shot. So first of all, yes, this is the new plan I received today, which makes me concerned of a lot of things not having been looked at. I kind of amazed that this dilapidated shed would actually now be considered to be moved to this new foundation. Um, isn't this a new accessory dwelling? Yes, and, and that's, that's what the uh, special use permit is that they're applying for, is an accessory dwelling. Oh, okay. So, um, and we've already talked about it being in the Rhinecliff overlay zone, local waterfront revitalization area, and Towns National Historic District, all of which require extra scrutiny. So you, when you get a brand new, new plan, you worry about the scrutiny. Um, I actually got some notes from a professional in this area, which may, a couple of things have been mentioned, but not all of them. Can you speak into the microphone? Not all of them have been mentioned, these, these notes from a legal professional. Um, there's no evidence in the file that the application and supporting documentation has been reviewed and signed off by the ZEO as required by Section 125.66 of the Town Code. The ZEO, ZEO needs to carefully review this application and determine that the proposed accessory dwelling meets all of the requirements of the zoning law. The file indicates that this action was determined to be exempt from environmental review as a Type 2 action under the State Environment and Quality and Review CRR Act. However, part the project does not fall within any This action requires environmental review either as an unlisted or Type 1 action. The existing septing system is approved for three bedrooms. According to the town's records, the existing residence contains three bedrooms. Department of Health approval is required for the additional bedroom to be contained in the accessory dwelling. Given the existing residential sewage problems in Rhinecliff, the proposed septic plan should be subject to heightened scrutiny. This proposed accessory dwelling must meet the criteria for accessory dwelling set forth in section 125.65 of the zoning law. The intent of these regulations is to ensure that the proposed accessory dwelling will not have an adverse effect on adjacent lands, immediate neighborhood, and the character of the community. It must meet all the general standards and criteria set forth in the zoning law and additional criteria set forth in Section 125.69 of the Zoning Law for Rhinecliff Overlay. The burden is on the applicant to demonstrate that the proposed accessory dwelling meets all these criteria. And the map showing the, the shed being moved to a new, the, I already noted this um, location was just filed today. Um, public has not had opportunity to review. No, there's the board. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did send to uh, Gretchen and something planning at pictures of the shed in the last uh, few days where there is already work happening. I don't know what work that is, but from my point of view, there have been sort of woods and planks and things falling down and, and tarps going up for quite a period of time, which may be related to what was discussed mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'd like to see a north elevation of the building um, to see what the, uh, obviously, what the perspective from my point of view would be as opposed to the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's also a uh, roof deck proposed, 10 by 10. Um, so I'm not sure where that stands um, in this new plan. Uh, I assume it's where the building narrows a little bit to the west, but I'm not sure. Um, so really, I think, certainly I think we've heard this already, but this public hearing has to be continued. Um, matters are not clear yet. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 oh, hi. Oh, yeah. hi. Yeah. Yeah. It, the public hearing will be continued because the planning board just received this as well and has not had a chance to go over the new plan either. So it will definitely we will be continuing this public hearing. Okay. Yeah, I just, I, there was a lot of legal stuff that I didn't understand, obviously, but uh, the issue of whether there's been anything, any action on the building happening, it's not true. Nothing has been done since November, uh, and certainly since you've been out there. I did cover the, um, 
existing work that you saw with blue tarp because the wood is untreated and unpainted and then it was a lot of rain. That's the only action that's been taken on okay. the building. Can you clarify whether this is a third a bedroom or if there's already a three bedroom residence? No, this was part of the... Go ahead. You know, last meeting we went through all of this. Uh, we did call the health department. We talked to two different engineers. They, we talked to um, the guy at the health department about this. We were advised by the health department, and it was run by the head of the health department, um, that, that this is a three-bedroom dwelling. And one of the spaces in our, 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 our architect who designed our front house, there, there's one big, one big space that we use as the art room and the dance room. So we said, well, great, we have two bedrooms, one decent size and one little tiny one in the house, could be an office, and that this would make it usable for our third bedroom. So we addressed that. We addressed the septic system uh, issue. We addressed almost everything that you brought up, and I wish you were, if you were upset, you came in and introduced yourself and asked us. You know, that's, <laughs> that's well, it's just, you know, we're new to the neighborhood. That's not very welcoming. Well, when this is we why have we have public. You know. This is why we have public hearings so people can come forward. They can actually hear the presentation, hear the okay. different, different uh, explanations from people who have made site visits and things like that. So they have a better handle on exactly what's happening and what their concerns might be. It's just to give everyone a fair chance to speak up and to be heard. Okay. Um, well, one thing we will require from you is a letter from the health department, stating that. They have spoken to you okay. that there will be no more than three bedrooms attached to the septic system on this site. Right. Uh, however, you're proposing to do that. You know, I assume to be moving one from the main house and giving that uh, bedroom to this this structure should it be approved. Okay. But we will require that in writing from the health department that they have indeed approved that going forward rather than saying they want the system looked at. I mean, it's an old system, as you say, that they may want some modification or something like that. We'll definitely need something from them. Okay. I think Jeff Decker did come out and look at it with the engineer, so I'll, I'll see if I can get something from him in writing. Yeah, well, actually from the... Uh, and the, health, and department the department health department is where what we required from yes that they've spoken to Jeff that they've seen whatever he's proposed uh, and that they're uh, comfortable with that that they don't want any further survey work done or anything of that sort okay and that the health department they need to indicate that the health department is uh, comfortable with whatever I'll call it legal arrangement has been made to guarantee that in fact there will never be more than two bedrooms in the main structure and the one in the accessory that more of a zoning enforcement issue? Uh, Why is it, it well, the health department? It's a health department issue because of the uh, their, their design of the system, but apparently as a, as a three-bedroom system. So they need to warrant that the system continues at all point in time to be a three-bedroom system. But I think in response to what Richard's saying, I think he's right. One of the conditions of approval would be that the system remains a three-bedroom system, however right. the configuration is made. You're going to approve it Correct. based on an engineer's design and Ron, the ZEO's approval of that okay. this, the, the enforcement lies with, okay. with Ron. The situation to this point, though, the representation is that the health department is not going to review uh, any aspect of design. They're simply going to accept the uh, the existing system's ability to serve the accessory apartment provided that the third bedroom is, is given up in the principal structure. And, and we're asking yeah, them so to it's state. Not the it's not the normal process. Right. And we're asking no, the health department that. to state that indeed they're not going to do further review. I mean, we want to know that in writing that they're not going to do further review. Okay. 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 Uh, other questions, comments from the public? Richard. Yes, Richard. Richard. <clears throat> yes, I'm Richard Kopyshansky. I own um, the house across the street, 20 Russell Avenue, and the house right next to this property, which is 21 Russell, and I own the building lot on the other side of their house, so I'm, I own all that property around there in Rhinecliffe. Uh, I bought the house across the street in 1980. And um, Bud and Marion Fowkes own this house that we are discussing. It's 19, Russell, correct? And they were joking a, a lot about that it's, if I needed a tool, I would go and I, can I borrow a tool from the shed? And they said, well, it, it belongs to you, so why, yeah, why not? I mean, but they were joking. They never belonged to me. They, only because of the, the way the lots are divided in Rhinecliffe. 
you know, it's obvious it's theirs. There's, there's no doubt about that. So when they asked me when they first came, they said they wanted to work on the shed and, and you know, um, rehabilitate it and fix it up. And I said, fine, that's no problem. I mean, you know, it, on one side it's divided with forsythia bushes, and on the other side it's divided by a little drop-off. So, you know, I thought those are good enough borders for me. I mean, I don't need a big fence or anything. So, I, you know, I just said, sure. But they, they wanted to do a little bit more, I think, and uh, um, the original sketches, I was giving them 18 feet on one side, and they were giving me 17 feet on the other side, and that was probably just a mistake in the drawings, I'm sure. That was not intentional. Um, I, I, you know, I, I got there, uh, uh, and because I was working with John Marvin, and we were talking about this easement, that I was going to give them 18 feet on one side, and they were going to give me the other 18 feet on the other side, and it was fine. So we were working on it. Um, but then uh, I was told by Ms. Long that they decided to move the building so we wouldn't have to go through these easements. So I, I showed up there once and the building was moved and there was a uh, work done on it already and an addition put on it already. And it was moved, but it wasn't moved totally off my property. So. You know, if, if they just wanted to keep it as it was, I would have absolutely no problem with it. There's four houses on this side of Russell Avenue. It's, um, I just don't believe that another living unit on that small lot can, would be right for the, for the neighborhood and for that, that property. You bring up a point like, how, how do you, they own it now, when they sell it, the person who bought the house could be, turn those rooms upstairs back into three bedrooms, still keep that one as a bedroom, then all of a sudden it's a four bedroom. I just built a house in Rhinecliff two years ago, and what the health department made me go through on 1.4 acres for a two bedroom house, it's absurd. I, it was crazy, and to think that this can happen on whatever size lot that is does not make any sense to me. I, I've always been a great neighbor. If you want to fix it up, fix it up. I don't care that it's on my property. I know it's yours. But then it, this whole living thing it really affects the neighborhood. And, uh, you know, so right now it's right up against my property and the way they moved it it just looks pretty shabby back there right now and i know now you're going to move it to the other side and so which is going to border if i decide to build another property there i'd go through all the right things by the way um so i i don't know what to do about this i don't know how you're going to figure this out i don't know if there was a building permit given in the first place to put the addition on already was there not to my knowledge or uh, a, a legal, a legal no permission to move the building? No. Uh, not to my knowledge. So I guess so the, the, um, the public hearing is going to continue. Oh, yes. OK. I, I have a few things to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Please. OK. okay. Mm -hmm. oh. This is my neighbor. He owns all the property around us. We went to him for two years and asked if we could do this. And he did say, yeah, do anything. And I said, well, what happens to you if you die? What if you decide to sell? It, it affects us too. It's not just a one-way street. I asked you, are you planning to build next door to us? And you said, you don't have any plans. So it can't just go one way, even though we're new. And so we waited, we, you said if you, I said, oh, how about if I hire a lawyer, which we did, Kevin Wade, to draw papers to do an easement because, well, it's gone. There's two pizza slices. 
that are basically equal. We're not selling land. There's nothing being sold. It was just for use of the property so we wouldn't have to move it. I, I sent him, I don't know how many emails for two years asking him to, he says, well, I have to show it to my lawyer. And he goes on and on and on. He says, well, we want to work on this. You know, we want to use this space. Two years, even more maybe. Finally, I said, let's just make this easy and move it off off if we can. So we weren't planning to do this whole big thing, but now we are because as just as you said, it's a big deal. We had no idea. We're naive. Sorry about that. But you know what's fair is fair. We did pay for that property. We did come to you. We have tried to talk to you. We have emailed you over and over. What you said to David is, well, you're just going to have wild parties there. I'm, I take insult by that. <laughs> you know, I, I, so you don't know us. So anyway, that's that. I had, that's my response. Uh, our attorney said, he, you're not selling anything. Why doesn't we paid for the lawyer? We said we'd pay for his lawyer to look at it. He never showed it to his lawyer. Well, I think at this point, what we have to deal with is what's before us right now, which is the land as its own by your neighbors and by you, what you have there. The fact that work has proceeded on this and somewhat significant work has proceeded without a building permit, which in and of itself is something that would, would be considered a violation. We definitely need to look into this whole situation. We need something from the health department, obviously. Of course. What they're saying. Uh, they may well, given I know what they put Richard through and what they put most of Rhinecliff through for I new know. construction. Right. And they may well wish to take a, a look at this. And if they don't wish to, that's fine. But we need that documented from the health department that indeed they're going to do that. Uh, we also, since this is a new plan that just came in today, no one on the planning board has had a chance to look at it, and we need to be able to go over that. Right. Uh, among the things that we also need to see, I don't know, I haven't seen it yet myself, so I don't know, I, I know Richard was looking closer, he may have seen whether or not the connections for water and sewer, for where this is ultimately going to be situated, the shed, if they're on that plan, if the final location of where the shed is going to be is on that plan. Um, quite frankly, if it continues to be on part of Richard's property, then under our law, Richard has to be a uh, co-applicant on this special use permit and site plan because you, we cannot give uh, site plan approval or special use approval for someone on someone's property if they're not part of that application process or if you don't have an easement from them permitting you to represent them and presenting to use that property. So we do have a number of things here still to work out that we need to go through, some other documentation. We really need, if this is the final site plan for the site, we need a chance to look at that and go over it, make sure it has the information that we need. Uh, Michael, there, there's also, I'm just looking at my notes. Uh, I believe the matter of seeker classification was addressed earlier today because I did have a conversation with an attorney about this project and I assume it was the attorney uh, who was referred to uh, by, by the neighbor. Uh, if in fact there is no ZD, ZEO determination in the file, a uh, written determination as to the uh, uh, appropriateness or the uh, permissibility of the use needs to be in the file. I know that uh, Ron is aware of the project and I believe he uh, uh, he authorized this to be included on the agenda. Uh, as you pointed out, the um, uh, plan has just been submitted today, the revised plan. That needs to be uh, examined as to its sufficiency. I know uh, I saw uh, it being uh, primarily, at least from this distance, a site plan. I guess it has a PE stamp on it. I don't know whether the exterior architectural plans have yet been stamped by an, ar an architect, which is a requirement. Uh, obviously, there are some additional referral responses that have yet to be received. Does it have to be re-referred if the site plan has changed? Uh, the if the building plan has been has, has changed, uh, and of course the, uh, the the health department consideration pl comes into play, that all raises the issue of whether this public hearing should be continued to the 19th of June, or does it need to be continued to a later date? Uh, I think part of that depends upon the ability to get the information that we require from the health department, things of that sort. If this is indeed the final plan, or are there are there issues, or are there matters that aren't on this plan that need to be on it? And the, this, uh, actually, that is not the final plan, because it's, um, it uh, was stated that um, uh, the uh, circular staircase location uh, is going to be 
um, modified as, as previously uh, discussed. Now, I don't know if that obviously it shows on the site plan. It should show on the architectural plans also. Yeah. So, so technically, that is not the final plan. It may be okay. close to it. Okay. Um, I, I think it would be very difficult to turn all that around in. I think so. Two weeks. Yeah. I think well, you want to. They have the opportunity to do it. If if uh, they can, they'll do it. If they can't. Why wouldn't we give them the opportunity? The, the only problem is that under the zoning law, continuing submissions on pending applications are due two weeks before the continued public hearing. Which that's today. Now. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's the... So would they have to be put off? Yeah. yeah. So it would basically be continuing it to the July meeting, which would be July... 17th. 17th. At 640. Um, I, you're aware of the, the, what we require, what we need to have. Right, okay. It's six fifty. Would be six. Okay. Um, six fifty. No, six forty. This is the first oh. one we've scheduled for that. No, I think we already have one. This is the second one for July. Right. Now we scheduled um, Solon for six forty. Six forty. That's for June, though. Oh, oh yes. okay. You're right. Are there any other comments or questions from members of the public on this application at this time? We will be continuing the public hearing. Yes, Richard. I don't think it was going on for a couple of years going back and forth and the, m m this project was in, on John Marvin's desk when you decided to move the building so I was working on it why it took so long was the paperwork as I said was shoddy you were taking 18 feet from me on one side and only giving me 17 feet on another side that that was what difference does it make? I, I agree with you, but I was being the nice guy and I was going to do this, so that's the reason why it, one of the reasons why it took as long as it did. Well, with any luck at all, we will work this all out and um, <clears throat> you, uh, <laughs> the neighbors will uh, find, hopefully, the resolution of all this will, will be acceptable. But as I say, we are continuing the public hearing, so we will have further information. Some of the things that we don't have now, we will have and we will be looking at. So, any other comments from members of the public? Is the storage shed proposed or already on the property? Uh, is the, is the uh, storage shed, the small shed, uh, proposed or is it already there? I can show you. On the site? No, on, on, the, on the property. So it's not there. Oh, is it there now? Yes. Oh, no, no. Okay. No. Okay. We ordered it okay. months ago, but sitting there. Okay. Very good. Very good. Uh, anyone else on the planning board have a question tonight? I guess not. Could I hear a motion to continue this public hearing until 6? 40 on the 17th of July. On the 17th of July. So moved. Second. Second. Any comment or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. We'll see you then. <laughs> Our next public hearing, Colleen Mooney, Mark Sutton, and the Village of Rhinebeck, 3 and 76 Slate Dock Road Subdivision Plat. <coughs> Excuse me. Conduct a public hearing on application for subdivision plat approval under Town Code Chapter 101, Subdivision of Land, in the matter of a proposed .033 acre lot line alteration between two parcels, one owned by Mooney and Sutton, located located in the town's RM1 district, and 10.7 acre lands of the village of Rhinebeck, located in the village's LC district, to both eliminate encroachment of residential deck as unknowingly constructed into village property onto village property and provide a minimum two foot setback as authorized by the ZBA in 2003, being classified as an unlisted action under seeker. Mark. Good evening, uh, Mark Rominski representing um, uh, Mark Sutton and Colleen Mooney. Uh, this is a uh, lot line alteration uh, in the town of Rhinebeck. It's located on Slate Dock Road uh, near its intersection with Route 308 uh, Rhinecliff Road. As mentioned in the, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, description of this action, uh, it's simply a, it's a minor lot line alteration that's going to uh, clean up an encroachment uh, from a Sutton Mooney parcel onto a parcel owned by the village of Rhinebeck. It's actually the location of the village of Rhinebeck uh, water treatment facility. And so uh, the way that this uh, developed in 2003, an application was made to the town of Rhinebeck ZBA for construction of a deck 
on the uh, on the Sutton Mooney residence. And so, in doing that, uh, um, the uh, and that that was based on uh, certain uh, boundary information. And so, in doing that um, application, ZBA granted that variance for construction of a deck. And in that variance, it stated that the I guess it would be the north side of the deck uh, could be uh, two feet would be two feet south of the common boundary line between Sutton Mooney and the village of Rhinebeck. Uh, Sutton Mooney went to sell the property. Uh, a, uh, uh, a field survey uh, was was uh, performed by uh, Robert Campbell at that time, and it was found that 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 in fact that deck was actually constructed on the property of the village of Rhinebeck. It's on the water treatment plant par uh, parcel. So after uh, discussions with the uh, village of Rhinebeck, and the village of Rhinebeck is also an applicant uh, in this uh, in this action. So it's Sutton Mooney and the village of Rhinebeck. Uh, they came to an agreement to purchase a small triangular piece of land, which is 0 0.033 acres of land, uh, which which in uh, uh, it basically uh, now conforms with the area variance that was granted for this particular back deck back in 2003. So the the new parcel configuration shows a line parallel to the deck that was constructed. So this is field constructed or field located as as constructed, and it's now offset two feet from that line. And so that was uh, what was used. That was the criteria that was used in, in order to determine uh, the parcel configuration. So this small small parcel will now be uh, added to what's been defined on this uh, subdivision plan as lot number one, and then lot number two, the village of Rhinebeck, will have the uh, um, the balance of that of, of the remaining lands uh, uh, per their per their parcel. Um, so this uh, particular plan shows the um, uh, you know appropriate um, survey information. And uh, zoning districts that uh, that are that apply to uh, uh, both of these parcels, and then finally, um, following this, a, a consolidation deed uh, will be prepared to um, to include that small parcel of land on, in the Sutton Marine parcel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I guess the site visit uh, was Melody and myself. Mm -hmm. It makes perfect sense. Uh, it's just cleaning up you know a simple error that was made and we didn't see any issues in the field at all and it's a really nice deck it's, it's quite beautiful beautiful deck. beautifully done very nice indeed be ashamed to have the village using it <laughs> <laughs> i don't think we want to plant that idea in their head i think village they'd like to picnics on the deck oh yeah. lord or maybe move the village offices there i don't know <laughs> But uh, no, it's it's actually very, it makes perfectly good sense, obviously, and um, it's it's a lovely spot, and it's very well the whole thing is very well conceived, so the, it's a nice spot. Okay, uh, town conservation advisory board. Good evening again, Ryan Dowden submitted the report, and he asked me to state that the CAB and the Waterfront Advisory Committee uh, found no potential negative impacts to the environmental policies as well as the policies found in the town's LWRP. Okay. Uh, at this point, anyone in the public have a comment or question or uh, anything they'd like to make on this? Okay. Any further comment, questions, members of the planning board? If not, you have a secret resolution, I negative do. declaration, and an approval resolution to be considered. Uh, the first prior to the close of the public hearing, the second subsequent to the close of the public hearing, and obviously both are recommended for your approval. Okay. Well, we'll shorten this up a little bit. The Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board hereby acts as follows on a proposed action involving an application by Colleen Mooney and Mark Sutton in the Village of Rhinebeck for subdivision plat approval under Town Code Chapter 101, Subdivision of Land in the matter of a proposed .033 acre lot line alteration between two parcels. <coughs> One, pursuant to the Planning Board's classification of the proposed action as an unlisted action under Seeker, determines upon its review of the short EAF Part 1 and its own completion of the annexed short EAF Part 2 in consideration of both the criteria for determining significance set forth at Title 6.617.7C NYCRR and pertinent coastal policy set forth within the town's LWRP that the proposed action as described above and involving no proposed development will cause no potential negative, no potential significant adverse impact on the environment, and thus issues a negative declaration 
determination of non-significance under seeker, deeming an environmental impact statement not to be required and stating such will not be prepared. Two, authorizes the chair to so execute the short EAF and directs the planning board clerk to distribute and file the executed determination of significance in the manner set forth within the seeker implementing regulations title 6 part 617.10 NYCRR. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. A second. Second. Any uh, comment? I will poll the board. Eric? Aye. Edna? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Melody? Aye. Richard? Aye. Woody? Aye. And I vote aye. Could I hear a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. aye. Let's see if I can shorten this next one. Start with the... Ew. I'll just start with the ones. Yeah, I think we're just going to start with the uh, prime numbers here. Uh, remember what I said about the first first one? Okay. One, grants waivers from certain requirements stated in Town Code Chapter 101, Subdivision of Land, Subsection 101-7.1b, Paragraph 7, 11, and 12, in consideration of the absence of any proposed physical changes to the modified lots upon alteration of their shared boundary. Two, approves the above cited application by Colleen Mooney and Mark Sutton and the Village of Rhinebeck in the matter of a proposed minor subdivision shared lot line alteration and authorizes the chair to stamp and sign the subdivision plat upon the applicant's satisfaction of each of the below conditions and or requirements of the 180 calendar days of the adoption of this resolution. A, stamping of the subdivision plat is non-jurisdictional subdivision and for filing purposes only by the Dutchess County Health Department. B, submission of subdivision plat drawings in the form and number specified within Town Code Chapter 101, Section 101 dash 4.4 except as may be modified as to lesser number by the chair in consideration of filing and distribution requirements and including all required stamps, seals and certifications and required agricultural data notation. C. Submission of a draft consolidation or merger deed in a form suitable for recording in the Dutchess County Clerk's Office coincident with the filing of the approved subdivision plat so as to obviate what otherwise would be the creation of a freestanding non-complying parcel. D. Payment of any outstanding fees and or reimbursable amounts due to the Town of Rhinebeck related to the review and processing of this application. Three, in taking this action, the planning board notes there are no new lots or additional housing sites created through this subdivision. Accordingly, neither the provision of the town code addressing the set aside of recreational or other open space land nor the provision addressing the development of affordable housing is deemed applicable to this subdivision. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Comment. I will poll the board. Richard. Aye. Woody. Aye. Eric. Aye. Edna. Aye. Sharon. Aye. Melody. Aye. And I vote aye. Thank you. All right, moving right along. Okay, our next public hearing, Chris Meyer, 277 Rhinecliffe Road, site plan approval. Conduct of public hearing on application for site plan review and approval under Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning in the matter of proposed Phase 1 exterior modifications to a single family dwelling being a contributing structure on a 3.218 acre parcel within the Historic Preservation HP20 and Hudson River National Historic Landmarks Districts and the town's LWRA and adjacent to a certified ag district being classified as type two action under seeker. Take it away. Okay, this is a, a home on Rightcliffe Road uh, purchased uh, the end of last year. It's in need of repair and what we're proposing to do is renovation to make it livable on a year round basis. This will include uh, interior uh, uh, upgrading, de interior demolition, replacing insulation, electric plumbing, and uh, all, all interior work except for the uh, windows, which would be uh, obviously uh, seen from the outside. Pretty straightforward, pretty, pretty simple in my opinion. Um, I'll be doing the work myself. This is uh, what we're calling phase one. Phase two will be uh, later, where we'll bring in an architect to look at uh, modifying part of the building that's in, uh, in need of repair that's uh, basically ready, ready to fall down. But that's not what we're, what we're doing here. Okay. Um, I think uh, Melody and Sharon, you did the site visit? I was not able to make it. Uh, Sharon. Yeah. Well, uh, I was there and uh, Bob Donaldson from the CAB was there. Uh, it's a, really, it's a Oh, that's an 1837 house. Uh, it needs some see. work, but it's, it's got a good foundation to it. Uh, the windows need to be replaced. Uh, right now they're called a, a cottage window. They're rather unique. Uh, you could probably still get them, but they'd probably be pretty costly. 
uh, if he went with a four over four or two over two window, as we were discussing that day. Uh, they were a little bit later in, in the 18th century, but or 19th century, but uh, they would still fit in. Uh, but it's a. I mean, it needs new windows, and we have no problem with it. Um, we've heard from county planning. It's a matter of local concern. Uh, Town Conservation Advisory Board. I'm sorry. Good evening again. Back on um, May 20th, Sharon and I had a very enjoyable and informative site visit at the structure. And uh, regarding the proposed renovations, both on the main house and the contributing structure, that garage, the uh, WAC does not find any issues or concerns under Section 2, Part B, ex existing land use and the noted policies that I outlined in the LWRP. And I, I might add, uh, Mr. Meyer, on behalf of everybody, thank you for um, restoring a hidden historical treasure in this town. Good luck on your work. Thank you. Uh, we also referred it to the town historian. We have not heard back, but the 30 days has elapsed. So, uh, so much for that, I'm afraid. Okay, I'd like to open this up for public comment. Um, Can I ask one question? I just want clarification. The window opening size is not being changed. Is that correct? No, the, uh, yes, it's correct. The, the number of windows, the opening size, the location will all be as is. The only thing being changed is the old drafty window being replaced with anything. Right. But the only reason I'm asking is, you know, Sharon had indicated that the windows that are there earlier in design than what you're replacing it with, but as long as the window size itself is not changing, should someone in the future wish to replace them with an exact replica, that could still be done. Also, uh, I'd like to point out that uh, cottage sash is available uh, by both Marvin and Anderson uh, for replacement windows, and I, I just happen to know that because I just went through the process, and they did offer that for us. So if you want to look into that, uh, it might be just so you can replace it with what is there. I did find that since we started it. Okay, yeah. good. Well, if that could happen, that would be wonderful. <laughs> okay. Now, there may be some issues with the, 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 uh, the one uh, safety code. Mm -hmm. The cottage stash windows don't open Got it. all the way. Yeah, no, I was yeah. just clarifying that, you know, if there's an option in the future that once the window size is changed, that option kind of goes away, but you're not changing the window right. size itself. So it's a, it's a non-issue for yeah. me. Oh, one okay. thing, too, with the cottage windows when I was uh, researching it was that they also come in a casement design rather than the, the raise up like this currently in the house. So if you could get a casement in the same size too, that would be good too. That, that to me distracts from the original intent of the window. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. mm -hmm. so I, I would be reluctant to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Well, you, you definitely have your work cut out for you. It's a beautiful old house. It's, it's gorgeous. Uh, nothing from the public? All right, it's a type two action, so seekers complete. Uh, could I hear a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good, well, okay. Once again, the Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board here acts as follows on the application by Chris Meyer for site plan review and approval under Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning, Section 12573.B in the matter of a proposed Phase 1 exterior modifications to a single family dwelling being contributing structure in a 3.218 acre parcel located at 277 Rhinecliff Road within the Historic Preservation HP20 and Hudson River National Historic Landmarks District and the town's LWRA and adjacent to a certified ag district. One, reaffirms its prior classification under seeker of the post action as a type two action for which further environmental review is precluded. Two, in consideration of the extent of the phase one exterior modifications being limited to the installation of replacement windows of dimension and appearance like those existing on this historic dwelling, waives the submission of any additional information that might be construed to be required upon strict application of the site plan re submission requirements set forth in town code chapter 125 section 125-7. Three, authorizes the chair to note the planning board's approval of the replacement windows on a copy of the submitted catalog cuts and to transmit a copy of the approved catalog cuts as noted, so noted, to the applicant, the zoning enforcement officer, and the building inspector. Four, prior to acting as authorized above, the chair shall confirm that there are no outstanding fees and or reimbursal amounts due to the town of Rhinebeck related to the review and processing of this application. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. And a second. 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 Any questions, comments? I will poll the board. Richard? Aye. Woody? Aye. Eric? Aye. Edna? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Melody? Aye. And I will vote aye. And as a handy parting gift for you, 
the Right, and it's cuts. Um, Sorry, I don't think really. Yeah, it's just the same thing. Yeah. 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 I think all we need are the catalog cuts from that for me to stamp them. There is, there is nothing else that you need to submit. So you should be all set. And thank you. Good luck. Okay, I think we have one more public here. Two, Two more. Oh. All right, well, here we go. Okay. Susan Koff as trustee 125 and 167-169 Ryan Road subdivision plat wetlands permit special use permit and site plan approval. Conduct of combined public hearing on application for subdivision <coughs> plat approval under town code chapter 101 subdivision of land. Application for wetlands permit under town code chapter 120 wetlands and applications for special use permit and amendment of approved site plan under town code chapter 125 zoning in the matter of one a 0.562 acre lot line alteration between lot one and lot 3A, each remaining in excess of the historic preservation HB20 district minimum lot area, and two, the installation of an underground electrical line from Ryan Road to a transformer serving the single family dwelling under construction on lot 3A, and relocation of the generator site depicted on the related approved site plan being classified as an unlisted action under seeker. George. Thank you. George Rodenhausen, Rodenhausen Shaw for Susan Koff, the uh, trustee owner. Uh, so the first part of the application is for this lot line adjustment, which is on Ryan Road, close to the intersection with River Road. It's in uh, the, I'm sorry, this points uh, north this way, so this is in the southeast corner of uh, what is lot 3A under an old uh, 2009 approved subdivision. Uh, the lot line adjustment is for about half an acre, a triangle at the end of what is the old rail bed of the Astor Rail Road. That, uh, that came in through the property here. Uh, so Ms. Koff would like to sell this property, which is one property, uh, lot one, uh, same owner on both properties. Uh, and she wants to make sure that when she does so, this entrance to the rail bed is not lost to the other owner and cut off. So the purpose of the adjustment is simply to bring that lot line on the other side of the rail bed. So both lots are conforming lots, 22 acres, 21 acres. The transfer will not affect either one, make it non-conforming. Both the same owner, uh, and, and that's all there is to it. Uh, the second part of the application, or the second, third, fourth part of the application is a little more elaborate, but it is to uh, amend the site plan that was approved last year Next year for construction of the house, uh, this lot, this is where the, we just looked at the uh, lot line adjustment right here. But on this lot, there is an approved, uh, uh, what we call it building area, which is a, a disturbance area on this old lot 3A in which the house is being built. Uh, the issue was bringing power from uh, Ryan Road, which is where the, where the uh, Central Hudson line is. Central Hudson brought the line across the road to a pole at this corner uh, and then would have run the power all along Ryan Road to the driveway up into the house. And that would have eliminated something on the order of 13 trees, most of which were significant trees along the edge of the road. Uh, Mrs. Koff decided to uh, do an underground electrical line about 20 to 50 feet at various points from Ryan Road that uh, did have to go through the adjacent area of one stream and the adjacent area of a wetland. So what we're applying for is an amendment of the site plan to show this underground electric line coming back up to a transformer which has already been installed by Central Hudson. Uh, it was installed uh, mistakenly not realizing the site plan is required for this part of it. It was approved by Central Hudson it has, been, it has been installed, it's been inspected by Central Hudson. It actually energized the line up to the transformer. They've also installed a meter pan at that point, which is simply a four foot post with a meter on it. Uh, and the, the house is now energized. I was mistaken when I did the site visit. I thought it hadn't been, but it has been energized. Yeah. So at this point, uh, it's in, but, uh, but we're applying to, to correct the oversight of not getting site plan approval. Also applying for the special permit for going through the wetland adjacent area and the uh, overlay area for the stream uh, within the 100-foot buffer. Uh, there are two, I think, minor points on this that I need to clarify. 
This is the plan that was submitted for the public hearing. Uh, they, as I mean, mentioned, Central Hudson did install a meter pan, which actually happened after this was drawn. So the meter pan is right adjacent to the uh, transformer that's shown on the plan that was submitted for the public hearing. Uh, it may not even be needed on the plan, but we'd like to make sure everything's on the plan. The generator is shown on the plan as being next to the transformer. Uh, Mrs. Koff has decided to move it back into <coughs> the area approved for disturbance and put it just north of the house. Uh, I don't have the plan with me, but it's, it was originally shown in the, the approved plan in the box, at the north end of that box. Uh, then we moved it down by the driveway. Uh, that's when I submitted this plan, but now she's moved it back. So it's basically back in the box next to the house, on the north side of the house, over 200 feet from any property line. And so it's, it's basically muffled by the house from getting to any nearby property line. So what I'd like to ask is that if you do get to the point of approving this plan, you want me to submit uh, those two corrections in the final plan for signature which would be to add the meter pan next to the uh, sub, next to the transformer and, and to move the generator back into the box approved for disturbance. That's it. Thank you, George. Uh, Melody and I did the site visit. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. We looked it over. Um, basically, uh, the uh, lot line alteration just makes sense because that permits an existing hardened surface to be used for access to the back of the property, the old railroad bed, without any further disturbance to the property in any way, shape, or form. There's no intention of doing any further development along either side of the railroad bed. It's just to ensure that it remains available to the owner of, of the property Ms. Mrs. Coff is building her house on. The uh, line going underground uh, followed a, looked like a fairly reasonable course, missing large trees, things of that sort. It was installed, it was inspected by Central Hudson so that we know it was done properly going up to the house there. Having the uh, meter pan right there by the transformer, it's, it just makes sense. And where the generator is going to go, no one's going to see it, no one's going to care. So basically, this is just sort of a correction of a mistake made uh, to allow the uh, finalized approved site plan to be absolutely accurate as to what's going on on the property. And I, I've found no problem with it whatsoever. I concur. Uh, CAB report. Good evening again. Uh, Ryan Dowden submitted the LWRP on this uh, site visit. And he conducted a site visit and he asked me to state that um, the CAB or the Waterfront Consistency Advisory Board discovered no potential or negative impacts to the environmental policies or those po policies found in the town's LWRP. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anyone in the public here to question, comment? Not seeing any hands raised. Uh, any other questions from members of the planning board? Art, you look you have a, pensive. Uh, you have a draft uh, seeker resolution. I do. Which, uh, uh, I recommend to you for your adoption. Uh, it should be adopted prior to the close of the public hearing. And uh, should you move on the seeker resolution, uh, you then have a draft approval resolution. Uh, when you get to the draft approval mm -hmm. resolution, if you do this evening, uh, I will have a slight modification uh, to uh, numbered paragraph four uh, to reflect the comments by Mr. Rodenhausen this e evening regarding uh, the uh, electric pan and whatever. Don't you think out of a merciful thing for everyone here, I shouldn't read all four pages of I that resolution? Think, I, frankly, I don't think you need to read much of it. Okay. Anyway, we'll start with the seeker resolution and see how this goes. The Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board hereby acts as follows and proposed action involving applications by Susan Koff as trustee for subdivision plat approval under town code chapter 101 subdivision of land wetland permit under town code chapter 120 wetlands and special use permit and amendment of approved site plan under town code chapter 125 zoning in the matter of a 0.562 acre lot line alteration between lot 1 and lot 3a each remaining in excess of the historic preservation hp 20 district minimum lot area and to the installation of underground electrical line from ryan road to a transformer serving the single family dwelling under construction on lot 3a and relocation of the generator site depicted on the related approved site plan being earlier classified by the planning board as an unlist action or seeker all is depicted in or otherwise described in applications supporting documents including transmittal letter from George Rodenhausen. Alrighty. Um, 
pursuant to the planning board's classification of proposed action as an unlisted action under seeker determines upon its review of full EAF part one and its own completion of the next full EAF part two in consideration of criteria for determining significance all set forth in title 6.617.7 C NYCRR and pertinent coastal policy set forth in the town's LWRP including those concerning historic scenic and agricultural resources that the proposed action as described above and involving no proposed delete, delete, delete. as described forward. above will cause no significant potential significant adverse impact on the environment and thus issues a negative declaration determination of non-significance under seeker deeming an environmental impact statement not to be required in stating that such will not be prepared. Two, authorizes the chair to so execute the full EAF and directs the planning board clerk to distribute and file the executed determination of significance in the manner set forth within seeker implementing regulations title 6.617.12 NYCRR. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Ooh. Second. Second. Any comment? I will pull the board. Richard. Aye. Woody. Aye. Eric. Aye. Edna. Aye. Sharon. Aye. Melody. Aye. And I also vote aye. Could I hear a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Very good. Okay. Could I have a motion for the vice chair to read this four pages? <laughs> Hearing none. Okay. But I will summarize. Okay, this is the draft approval resolution under Town Code Chapter 101, Subdivision of Land uh, 120, Wetlands, and Chapter 125, Zoning. In the application of the matter of subdivision plat approval, we're approving the above cited application by Susan Koff and authorizing the chair to stamp and sign the subdivision plat upon the applicant's satisfaction of each of the below conditions and or requirements within 180 calendar days of the adoption of this resolution. Those being revision of the submitted survey map to indicate the westerly located maximum disturbance envelope as per filed map number 5837A within lot 3A is limited to development of a, per of a permitted accessory structure and may not be developed as the site of an additional principal dwelling. Two, stamping of the subdivision plat as non-jurisdictional subdivision or for filing purposes only by the Dutchess County Health Department. Submission of subdivision plat drawings in the form and number specified within Town Code Chapter 101, Section 101-4.4, except as may be modified to a lesser number by the chair. Four, submission of the draft of a consolidation or merger deed in a form suitable for recording in the Dutchess County Clerk's Office coincident with the filing of the approved subdivision plat so as to obviate what otherwise would be the creation of a freestanding, non-complying parcel. Five, payment of any outstanding fees and or reimbursable amounts due to the Town of Rhinebeck related to the review processing of this application. In the matter of the application for wetlands permit, we find the proposed work involving the installation of underground electrical cable to have limited, if not negligible, degrading effect on the protected wetlands in consideration of the erosion and sediment control measures so fence that will be employed until all disturbed or otherwise presently unvegetated areas are properly vegetated or otherwise stabilized. Approves the application of wetland permit under Town Code Chapter 120 wetlands for a period of two years from the date of this resolution and authorizes the chair to so notify the applicant, the ZEO, and the building inspector upon the applicant's satisfaction of the following conditions and requirements. Grant by the planning board a required site plan special use permit. Grant by the Planning Board of Site Plan approval, including stamping and signing of the approved site plan, in this case being an amended site plan by the Chair. In the matter of the application for special use permit, determines the installation of the underground electrical cable as proposed to serve a single family dwelling permitted by right to be consistent with the criteria for a special use permit. Grants the requested special use permit under Town Code Chapter 125 and authorizes the proposed installation. Authorizes the Chair to so notify the applicant, the ZEO, and the building inspector upon the grant of the Planning Board of Site Plan approval, including stamping and signing of the approved site plan. In the matter of application for site plan approval, amendment of approved site plan. Uh oh. Okay, stop me when you want okay. me to. Stop, stop after uh, uh, approved amended, uh, in second line. Okay, approves the application for amendment of approved site plan and authorizes the chair to... Stamp and sign the approved amended site plan, comma, mm -hmm. as modified to discuss the meter pan and generator locations disclosed by Attorney Rudenhausen during the public hearing. And transmit copies thereof to the applicant, ZEO, and building inspector. One, with the understanding that modifications from the previously approved site plan are limited to the following, modification of the site plan boundary as will be finalized upon filing of the approved subdivision plat, addition of the underground electrical cable and related transformer as depicted in the above cited site plan drawings, relocation of the emergency generator as subject of catalog cut specifications presented to the ZEO on May 8, 2017. Two, subject to the applicant's satisfaction of the below conditions and or requirements within six calendar months. 
Finalizing the subdivision plat approval process as noted above. Submission of the site plan drawings as cited above for stamping and signature in the form and number specified under Town Code Chapter 125. C. Submission of a plan satisfactory to the chair upon consideration of review by the Conservation Advisory Board for revegetation and other planting within 200 feet of Lot 3A's frontage on Ryan Road. D. Payment of any outstanding fees or reimbursable amounts due the Town of Rhinebeck with respect to the submission, review, and processing of this application and the related applications for subdivision plat approval, wetlands permit, special use permit under Town Code Chapter 101, 120, or 125, and the Town's fee schedule and executed escrow agreement. I think that pretty well covers it. Could I hear a motion to approve? Oh, oh thank you. Second. Second. <laughs> Rather eager, aren't we? <laughs> Richard. Yes. Aye. Woody. Aye. Eric. Aye. Edna. Aye. Sharon. Aye. Melody. Aye. And I also vote aye. Aye. Thank you, George. Okay, we have one more public hearing. Baptist Home of Brooklyn, Inc. 46 Brookmead Drive Special Use Permit and Site Plan Approval, continuation from May 1, 2017, of combined public hearing and applications for Special Use Permit and Site Plan Review and Approval under Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning in the matter of the Greens at Brookmead, the proposed construction of an 18,870 square foot adult day camp, um, day camp facility and Brookmead accessory uses under Town Zoning Laws Section 125-20, 125-68S, the undertaking of related site improvements including ex access ways, parking areas, lighting, landscaping, and utilities, and the upgrading of the existing wastewater treatment facility on 74.27 acre parcel within the Rural Countryside RC5 water resource overlay and flood fringe overlay districts and adjacent to a certified agricultural district. Uh, all is set forth within documents prepared by the project architect and project engineer and submitted on behalf of the applicant by the former on January 31st and March 13th, 2017, being classified by the planning board as an unlisted action under seeker. What we anticipate hearing this evening or, uh, 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 is some response, if any, uh, is to be made to the issues that were raised at the public hearing, the number of issues, the limited number of issues that were raised. Uh, any response to, uh, that may have been generated to date uh, to the technical comments that were presented by uh, Morris Associates as Planning Board Engineer. And thirdly, uh, any uh, input that may have been received by the Chair uh, from uh, the town land use attorney regarding the cross access issue. And I'll get right on to that. I spoke with John Lyons and verbally and he has told me that neither the access issue nor the bridge issue are pertinent to this application. They're not part of this application since no easements or rights of way, no legal documentation exists uh, demonstrating any obligation on the part of Brookmead to those. Uh, the planning board will not be considering those as part of this application. I think that your comments that you're going to be working with a neighbor on these two issues I think is, you know, is laudable and something that I, I sincerely hope that you will be able to come to a good agreements on those two issues. But they're not something for the planning board to authorize or, or whatever at the, at, under the, uh, the, the current application. Thank you. Okay. So yes, uh, we were waiting for... Oh. Oh. My name is Patrick Roberts at Optimus Architecture. Uh, thank you for having us again. Uh, this is a continuation of a public hearing from last month. Uh, and as such, you kept the public hearing open until all final comments were in from all respective boards, which I think you do now have. Uh, all comments in from the county, CAC, and so forth. Is that correct? Uh, we do have, well, we do have these comments, and they can also verbalize them, the CAB and all that. Okay. Um, I just want to check one thing. They're just late with it, right? They're, you know, 30, yeah. 30 days have passed. Long passed. Long yeah. passed. We haven't heard from Dutchess County, but it was submitted to them on the 10th of April, so the 30 days have passed. So as far as that goes, they've, it met the requirement. they've commented, it's yes. Basically no comment. Right. Good. Okay. Well, as such, I won't go through the entire application again, but for the public, uh, this is an 18,000 square foot new community center being proposed out in front of the existing Baptist home. Um, and this is just a continuation of the public hearing uh, from last month. Uh, as far as technical responses, uh, shall I turn it over to our civil engineer? Yeah, I think that was one of the main things we were waiting for is the response to our, our consulting engineer's comments on your original submissions. Uh, Andy Rimp from uh, Chase & Associates. Yes, thank you. 
Hi, my name is Andy Rimp from, from the Chazen Companies. Um, we worked uh, on some of the comments. The official response hasn't gone back into Morris yet. Mm -hmm. There's a litany of, of comments that they, they placed forth before us. I guess the precursor is there's none of the comments that I found troubling or something that we couldn't work with, you know, and, and hash out the details. Uh, plus minus round numbers, let's say there's 30 comments in total, at least 50% you know, of them were stormwater related. Mm -hmm. We've recalculated the model, we were reworking the plan, everything is going to be able to be worked out just kind of as <coughs> planned with some minor tweaks and clarifications. Uh, a lot of their questions were about, we, the applicants should provide uh, details for um, pavement design, utility trenches, you know, water, you know, lines, sewer lines, those type of details that should be provided. We absolutely agree. Uh, we're working on all those details. They're, they're in process of being sent. That application with the revised drawings will go back uh, in this week to the town um, through to Morris. The county uh, health department did reply to our initial submission. Uh, they've asked for some additional clarification information and uh, that application will go back in. They required a, an owner's consent signature, for instance, and a few other details, copy of the seeker form, things that have already been done but not provided to them. What we provided first was a basis of design set of drawings and specifications that the town also has now so that they could prepare uh, you know, their letter of acknowledging the submissions received and then start the review. So we are on the path to getting the initial comments for each the county and your uh, engineer Morris. And uh, I don't see any that, that really give us uh, any problems as far as, it, you know, will, will our project by its design and by its intent have any problems complying? Okay. What sort of time frame, we'll continue the public hearing obviously, what sort of time frame would you feel comfortable with trying to get this all wrapped up? Um, It'll be in this week, I guess, the comments back to them. I, I guess, does that tie you to holding the public hearing open until you've addressed every technical comment? But we have to hold Morris? it open, yeah. We just want to know when should we hold it open to so that you can get done what you need to get done and the reviews can come back. Uh, say our engineer, once you get back the materials back to him, he'll get back to us, the health department will get back to you, final comments, things like that. So at what time frame, we could, we could do this at the June meeting, I guess what, June 19th or July 17th, maybe is more realistic. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I can literally, like I said, they'd be, they'll be in later this week. I, I guess I'm just kind of well, concerned to why the public hearing would be open until every minutia of the site plan details are addressed. That's a site plan review thing versus a, a significance, no? no? Not in no. this community. Okay. The no. uh, site plan application has to, be, has to be complete, which means it has to have all the details for the site plan application to be technically complete. There also has to be a secret determination before the application is technically complete. So that hasn't been made. I think the, the board uh, could be in a position, and, and the, the rule is essentially submissions or continuing submissions on pending applications need to be on the table two weeks before the continued public hearing to allow board review as well as public review. What does that really mean, uh, Andy and Dave? It, it really means that from a, a procedural perspective, uh, this board, and I, uh, I think uh, um, there really are no environmental issues associated with this project. Uh, this board could be in a position at its June 19th meeting of um, taking care of the seeker, uh, adopting, uh, would be my recommendation, the board adopt a negative uh, declaration. Uh, with respect to the continuation of the public hearing and maybe wrapping up this project completely in terms of uh, review, uh, would be a continuation to the July 17th meeting, which means that it would provide the window of opportunity between today and, I don't know, it's June 30th or July 1st or whenever that application, whenever that two week before uh, period hits, uh, that would allow that period to uh, have your submission on the table, your revised submission on the table, let Morris conduct its review, and uh, basically uh, Morris, more have Morris advise the board that it's a go. Okay. Uh, that's yeah, that's sort of along the lines I was thinking, does that, uh, it gives everyone enough time to get everything done and perhaps be in a much better position so that we can just wrap it up then. And, and in that case, there'd be no, there'll be, there would be no requirement uh, that uh, 
uh, there be continuation of the public hearing to June 19th because the board can uh, act on secret, et cetera, outside the public hearing arena uh, on the 19th of, 19th of June, which means your whole team doesn't need to be here either. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, because I see, you know, we got the county's comments a little less than enough time to reply and get that back to you so i see how we can we can roll the submission and get that back to them allow them to respond yeah. prior to mm -hmm. and the to town the, needs, the town planning board needs to be satisfied that its completeness requirements are, are met with respect to the uh, county health department uh assuming that uh there's due diligence being uh, practiced and it's you know it's moving along in the right. process uh, the board can take an action uh granting a uh, site plan approval with condition with condition being that the securing of the external agency permits. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that, that doesn't have to be wrapped up. Right, and that's, that's yeah. fairly But the town, affairs need, to be, the town affairs need to be wrapped up. Correct, okay. Yeah. Any questions, members of the planning board? Any questions or comments, members of the public? Wow. We think we're... Okay, my name is Arnold Johnson, 342 Gardenia Drive, town of Rhinebeck. I'm here to ask the support of the board for the approval of the plan as put in there by Brooke Mead, coming from a situation where a daycare center is going to be required in the future. We need them. In addition to that, the greatest thing that happens to also people is kids and pets. There's nothing I don't think that goes and gives them any more joy than that. And with that uh, field down at the bottom of the hill and the kids going down there and playing, I've seen numerous clients from Brookmead go down there and see it. And it's great, great therapy for these people. I would hate to see anything change in plans to use that flat thing which as great neighbors and great citizens of Rhinebeck, Brookmead gives and lets the kids use for nothing. And space is a very, very valuable thing around for looking for ball fields. I have a couple of grandchildren, three grandchildren. I go down there and I know myself, get great enjoyment out of it. And all I'm asking is I hope you people can give a very, very favorable decision as put in by Brookmead. Thank you. Thank you. I think I can pretty well assume most of you are here tonight supporting this application. Uh, and we, had, we heard a good bit the other time, and I, 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 we do understand that, believe me. We really do. We know that the soccer people have been very, very grateful for being able to use the fields at Brookmead for a long time, particularly when some of the other stuff was pretty well crapped out, and that was about all they could use. Um, so we fully understand this and appreciate that. We really do. Right now we're trying to get the technical stuff wrapped up with the application here and uh, I think we're pretty well along on that road now um, at the so the, the last time we met we, we spoke about the elevations and where the building will be and what it's gonna look like we've been getting uh, phone calls from the community for those that are looking for the service asking us a little more detailed questions so we created this I would like to share it with you okay um, but they want to know a little bit what, what is this uh, program who is eligible for it so we made this uh, guide, which hopefully will be helpful. Um, it's designed to meet the needs of chronically ill, frail, elderly, and disabled adults that require primary, preventative, diagnostic, therapeutic, or rehab, and even palliative care services. A reminder, it's not just a social model, it is a medical model. Um, so in addition to the social, therapeutic, and rec programs, we were able to provide skilled nursing care, pharmacy services, uh, medical and diagnostic <coughs> care, and a number of, of, of services right there in the adult daycare that a social model um, cannot. We talk about the benefits which we spoke about last time. Um, to enroll right now you can contact Brian Zayden. His contact information is on this page so people can call and get on a list or get some more information. People are asking how do we pay for this. There's a number, a number of ways. An individual can be Medicaid eligible. Medicare will not cover it but um, 
many private insurances do, many managed care plans, um, and just please, our, our mission is to take care of individuals, so just call us and that will never be a barrier one way or another. We'll make sure that your loved one is taken care of. Um, it talks a little bit about when would a person consider this adult daycare model. Um, we talked last time about the respite and, and adult children needing uh, to be able to go to work and, and manage their children and what do they do with their parents or that caregiver. So um, just give us a call and we'll talk to you about it and, and walk you through the process. And the other piece is transportation available, absolutely. It's, uh, that's one of the biggest challenges that folks have is the transportation piece. So it is available. Our contact information is here. Um, any questions or any comments anyone has, we're, we're open to it. But just give us a call. and. We're we're here to help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is available on your website. I think we just uploaded it to Facebook. I think we want to give it here, but we'll we'll, we'll make it available on the website. Mm -hmm. Karen, uh, what is the? I mean, it, it could be paid privately, but what, what's the range? Do you think that that would? The rates are all set by the Department of Health, so we, we don't have the you know the autonomy to to inflate rates or do, so it's all set based on on the area acuity levels and what, what medical models go for. So that's something that we put in the CON application to the state and they, they look at our rates and they, they guide us. Okay. But in general, can you give us some examples? I, uh, the cost, I, I couldn't. Because again, many people have uh, pharmacy coverage, so their drugs will be covered by the pharmacy. Um, there's diff so many different kinds of insurances and pre-authorizations which will help you through and that's part of the case management services. Yeah, that's not a Is there any way we can get a handle on that uh, by going online? By I mean, what do we have to look up to find out what it would cost? The, the costs? Yeah, yeah. Well, we have to work with the Department of Health, so we'll get that shortly. I mean... Um, There's similar services around here that... There's one in Poughkeepsie and then one in Tenbrook, uh, in Kingston. In and Lake you will be, your, your costs will be commensurate with those two facilities? Ulster County rates are a little bit different than Dutchess County. So again, it's just driven by what the State Department of Health tells us that we, we can charge okay. or can bill. Yeah, the rates are not set so by us. Rates have to be on yeah. And is this the official name, the Brookmead Center? For right now it is, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anything else from anyone this evening? I think we're going to have a motion. Yes. We have a two-part motion. Uh-oh. Oh, it's not pushing it off. Evening. <coughs> Roger Kwan, um, resident of Rhinebeck for the past 17 years. Um, I'm actually here again just to speak um, and thank both the board and Brookmead for all their public service. Uh, I support this project as designed and planned, and I hope the board can give a favorable uh, find favorable finding to see it completed as is. Um, <clears throat> I got, became aware of the, the Brookmead project here because of soccer, but I just want to reiterate that Brookmead has been a part of my family's life uh, almost as early as I've been in Rhinebeck. In part, my, I took my children to, to Brookmead so that they could learn music there and play for the residents. Uh, that was an important connection uh, to my family, uh, to the community, and I'm really appreciate Brookmead's uh, continued support of the community, just not only for our youth, but for our, our aging uh, who, who need help, and actually the families who, who need the help to take care of their, their parents as they, they move on in their life. So again, if there's anything uh, I can do, and I think there are a lot of people here from the soccer community can do to, to support this project, uh, we'd like to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think what we're going to do is we're going to be continuing the public hearing, and I think we're continuing to July. Yeah, a two-part, two uh, two-part uh, uh, well, motion by the board. I was going to do that. Uh, part. The first is um, would be to um, authorize uh, to prepare a, the draft of the seeker resolution negative declaration uh, for the board's consideration on June nineteenth. Uh, further. Uh, Continue the public hearing, schedule a continuation of the public hearing uh, to 17 July at 645 uh, with an additional authorization to, to me uh, to prepare the draft of an approval resolution for consideration uh, if timely, uh, either on the 17th of July, uh, on the 17th of July or whenever later timely. All righty. Could I hear a motion to that effect? Could I hear a second? Second. Could I hear any comment? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, very good. Uh, that's what we said. Uh, when you get the things ready for Morris, you know, send us the town planning board, but also, you know, convey them directly to Morris so you, you know, that'll help to move things along rather than have to go through a middle person like me, which might really mess things up. So, you know, send it right to Morris. Any okay. you can drop set in my mailbox. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate it. Okay. We have one more item on our agenda this evening. Two. Two more items Two more. on our agenda this evening. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, I don't know if people want to leave, and I'll just, you know, we'll just break for about no. 30 seconds. Yes, we will, if people wish to leave, so oh, it's yeah, quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if people wish to leave right now, you know, take, take a couple minutes. Um, and if you do wish to discuss or talk, please go outside and shut the door so that we can continue in here. Out yeah, outdoors is a... Probably raining. It's nice to see people in favor of some of the rights. Yeah. I didn't Ah, well, but isn't it? <laughs> isn't it though? Okay. Yes, ma'am. One for the file, one for Ron, what, whatever you need. That's fine. Yeah, yeah that, that should be fine. Be fine. Yeah. I might have been just missed it, but I'm sorry. Oh. Oops. It's probably somewhere. Okay, we're going to move right along. Our next item is Grassmere LLC, Mill Road, and U.S. Route 9, yes? Oh, okay. Special use permit, wetlands permit, and site plan approval. This is a project update on Grassmere Farm Hotel Development being report concerning progress made and satisfaction of conditions and or requirements precedent to stamping and signing of phase 1A site plan. Jonathan, uh, I'm going to cover this for you unless, and, and please add uh, whatever. Uh, Grassman was required to, uh, under its uh, resolution, to submit a quarterly report to the planning board on progress. Uh, that report was submitted. I believe everyone received a copy. Uh, it indicates that uh, everything, uh, certainly due diligence is occurring, uh, everything's moving along well with the uh, other agencies, uh, and uh, there are a couple of matters to be buttoned up um, with the planning board uh, regarding uh, consolidation of parcels and a minor adjustment in the site plan uh, that deals with the, I think it's about a 40-foot shift in the uh, access location uh, on Mill Road. Uh, those are the subject of an application uh, that uh, was received today and uh, applications that were, were received today and will be subject to con um, acceptance consideration by the board on uh, meeting two weeks, uh, two weeks from now. Anything yeah. else, John? Yeah, yeah I, I think we, we had some very good discussions and it seems like the project is moving along very nicely right now. It is mainly details that need to be wrapped up. Um, before the final approval can be given, so it's uh, it's looking really good. The, all, the other the very positive thing that's happened is that uh, uh, substantial investment is already occurring in the property. Uh, the uh, uh, roof has been uh, replaced uh, on the uh, on the manor house uh, to protect that from the elements, and uh, we actually met um, 
with the project architects, the historic architects that have been brought on board. Uh, we met with them earlier today uh, to discuss uh, plans as they're going forward uh, pretty quickly for uh, uh, for restoration of the manor house, which I understand, John, is probably going to take 18 to 24 months or something of that sort. Yeah, probably 24. Right. <laughs> That's reasonable. <laughs> no, it, it's looking good, so um, keep it up. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. I couldn't hear Art's first thing because it was so loud outside. The very first part of this, the introduction, was something to do with the access route nine, blah blah. No, and it's not route nine access. Well, I don't know what the you're saying. the well, only access just, modification. Repeat it because it was impossible oh, to hear. Okay. I apologize. No. The the minor access modification is the shifting of the access point. Uh, on Mill Road, a distance of about 40 feet. I guess it's to accommodate more of a 90 degree uh, intersection. Yeah, more of a 90 degree intersection. So it's better visibility. Yeah. And then also the turning radius, we got into details of the engineer. Yeah. And it also puts it between the two, the two houses across the street mm -hmm. in a better situation. And it also remains strictly an, a an entrance. It is, not, it, is not, it is not an exit. It is strictly an entrance to the site. Yeah. So. Alrighty. All right. Thank you, Jonathan. All right. Now I think last but not least, Hudson Valley Rhinebeck LLC, 492 Ackert Hook Road, subdivision plat, special use permit, site plan approvals, and wetland permit. Sketch plan conference if, and, if timely, initiation of seeker compliance process in the matter of a 12-room country in one and a 28-unit multifamily residential condominium proposed in the uh, reutilization and redevelopment of a 136-acre National Historic National Register Historic District property in the Rural Countryside RC5 District. Just so everyone knows what this is tonight, is a sketch plan rather than an actual formal application by the applicant to us for us to accept. It's a sketch plan where we're going to go over what they're suggesting they do. We will then discuss them what we think they ought to do or might want to do. It's to assist both in our understanding what they want to do and their understanding what we believe the planning board feels is necessary to be in their application, things of that sort. After tonight, hopefully everything gets ironed out a little bit. That's after when they will then put together the formal applications for this project then come before the planning board at which point if we feel they're complete ready to go we will accept them we will schedule the public hearing process and all that will take place uh, but tonight is just for them to tell us what they want to do and uh, for us to sort of help guide them in what maybe they ought to do so that just so you all understand that's what this is not a formal application from them at this point Michael yes I'm going to recuse myself okay. from this application all right and thank you very much um, Mark, take uh, it away. Uh, good evening. Uh, Mark Verminski, um, uh, representing uh, Hudson Valley Rhinebeck LLC, also here with me tonight. I'm, I'm the uh, project engineer and land surveyor. Also with me tonight is uh, Matthew Rudikoff, um, Rudikoff Associates handling uh, the planner and, and, and the environmental uh, planning on the process on the project and also George Rodenhausen who is uh, is the project attorney so I'll just uh, I, you know we've talked to this uh, board you know for over the past year or so uh, about this project more I think so. and um, so I'll just you know briefly uh, I'll just start with a, a discussion about the existing conditions of the site and then um, <laughs> just flip over and, and uh, go through the uh, proposed you know, development of this property, um, you know, the proposed site plan and subdivision development. So, um, Rock Ledge is uh, located on the uh, west side of Ackerhook Road and the uh, north side of Haggerty, uh, Haggerty Hill Road through here. Uh, it, uh, total parcel size is a little, just a little less than 136 acres. It's 135.8 acres. Um, the majority of the property is uh, wooded with some uh, uh, wetlands that are uh, also shown on this on, on this plan on the the existing plan. So there's it's a combination of both uh, state and uh, federal wetlands, and then obviously the federal wetlands are uh, under the jurisdiction of the town of Rhinebeck. Uh, the one state wetland is is located here, um, and then uh, they, the uh, wetlands are are shown, uh, they are designated uh, by letter, wetlands A through 
I think it's F, um, is F being the, the, the state wetland. Um, this property uh, has access, as I said, it's uh, right now the access, there's two points of access off of Ackert Hook Road. One near the, the northerly portion, uh, right here, there's, so there's access going in, there's an existing roadway that comes in, comes in on this location. And then also, <clears throat> a little bit to the south of that, there's a uh, triangular intersection for access um, in, into the property. <coughs> As you can see uh, from this map, which also uh, includes topography, uh, it's generally you know rolling topography. There's some um, you know flatter sections, and then as you go to the uh, westerly portion of the property, uh, slopes get a little bit steeper as it adjoins all these properties. As you uh, enter into the property, it's, so it is a it's on the properties on the National Historic Register. So there's uh, several historic structures that are uh, included in the ha in, on this property and and have, have been labeled. Um, um, you know, there's a, there's a former dormitory, not a historic structure, but there's an existing stone cottage and uh, <coughs> a chapel that's located here. There's a, right here is the uh, um, existing mansion that's, that's associated with the property. And then some other, uh, you know, maintenance buildings and, uh, you know, other, other uh, uh, buildings, existing structures that are uh, that are accessory to that. Um, the property is also, uh, was formerly operated by uh, Daytop, um, and so that it was a rehabilitation uh, facility. And the, um, uh, with regard to uh, supply of uh, water supply and sewage disposal, they, they developed their own public water supply, and they also had a uh, existing sewage treatment plant for collection of the sewage. And so that water supply, that there's existing wells uh, located near the center of the property and properly treated and chlorinated and uh, distributed to those buildings. And then there's also a, uh, a sewage treatment facility that was, that's located on the easterly portion uh, right along the road and ultimately uh, discharges to a stream um, located near that uh, New York State DEC wetland. Um, I think that you know that pretty much covers the the existing conditions uh, for, for this uh, site. Oh, it's uh, it's also I should also note it's uh, it's located in uh, RC5 uh, zoning district. Um, what's being proposed? For the site is. Um, well, in summary, it's, what's being proposed is a, um, a country in one, which is uh, allowed in the, um, in the RC, RC5 zoning district, and then also a multifamily um, uh, development of 28 condominium units are being proposed. And so what I'll do is I'll just, I'll, you know, I'll start with the, um, just, just with the, you know, the part of the process to go through the town is, uh, once again, you're, uh, to have those two uses, you need to create a subdivision on the property. And so what's being proposed here is a two-lot uh, minor subdivision to create a parcel for uh, a 20-acre parcel for the country in one. And then the balance of the land, the balance of the 135.8 acres, uh, will be uh, the multifamily uh, condominium uh, parcel. And so on this site plan, uh, I've shown, I'll just start with the, like the configuration of the, of the two parcels. The, the, um, uh, the country and uh, parcel is, to, is, made, is the, the idea of it is to include those existing structures, those historic structures on the property with the, you know, with the focus being on the, you know, the existing manor house. So that's the, um, that's the, that's the, the main focus of it. Although, you know, including the other buildings for uh, you know, various uh, amenities to that country in one. And up here in the upper right-hand corner, um, I, there's, a, there's a delineation of all the, all the use, the, the existing uses of these, of these buildings and also the proposed uses. So I won't go into that detail right now, but, you know, there, it's, it's certainly outlined up here. Um, the, the, as I said before, the country in one parcel will 
ha will, will include all those units along with the necessary parking in order to you know, conf conform with the zoning of that lot. So the country in one is maximum allowed um, number of rooms in a country in one is 12. And that's what's being proposed in this application. <coughs> so the actual, once I get to the parcel configuration, it's through here, it kind of includes, it's a little bit of odd shaped piece of property. And then what it does is it includes all of the, uh, as I said before, uh, well, not all, majority of the existing buildings are included um, in, this, in this piece. And there's a, there's a, a, a reason for that uh, configuration, <coughs> which I'll get into later. Uh, but it, that's, it's generally this shape through here, which is the, which is the uh, uh, country in one. And then the balance of the property uh, will be, um, will uh, house the uh, condominiums. And so they have been um, laid out in seven different clusters that are shown on the property. And so those are, those are numbered through here, right? So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven over there. There's four units uh, for each cluster, which there's a requirement of the code to have, uh, a, I believe it's a minimum of three uh, mm -hmm. per cluster uh, as, as part of the uh, requirement for multifamily um, in, this, in this zoning district. And those will be, um, those be, will be connected by uh, a series of, uh, it will be a road network that utilizes uh, existing uh, a road network that's, that was, uh, uh, that that uh, was with the with the property um, when it was daytop and, and, pre and previous to that. In addition, it will also uh, uh, require s uh, construction of some new roadways in order to access all the units. The goal being to um, to cluster these units in in, uh, in in such a location as to minimize uh, the amount of site disturbance to the property and to be respectful of all the you know, the environmental considerations of the property which are included, uh, which, are, which have been included in the application. So the application also, you know, includes uh, respect to, you know, habitat uh, assessment. Uh, there's, um, as I said before, there's wetlands on the property. And so all in, in developing these clusters, those, those items have, have been taken into consideration. In addition to uh, you know, development of these areas and in, 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 uh, these clusters in such a way that um, all engineering and site disturbance can be uh, can be attainable and uh, and once again done in a respectful manner for the property. Um, as I said before, the um, uh, the you know the property is served by um, uh, uh, central water system and, and central sewer system. And that will need to be expanded. Uh, just in, it, it'll need to be expanded in extent to just uh, to to, um, to be able to provide service to these to these units. So uh, a series of uh, they'll be uh, utilized with, uh, for example, with a water system. Uh, some evaluation, some preliminary work has been done. Some hydrogeologic work has been done to evaluate the existing water system. And there's been, uh, you know, assessment made to, you know, possibly, um, well, not possibly, a requirement to probably uh, to drill another uh, another well to meet the current regulations for uh, state health department and also the Dutchess <coughs> County Health Department. Um, you know, uh, once again, pro uh, proper uh, treatment and uh, and disinfection uh, and distribution of that. Uh, water will take place, and so there'll be a series of water mains that will now uh, connect uh, connect these units. Uh, in addition, uh, uh, sanitary facilities will also be required. So, um, extension and connection to the existing sanitary system, uh, sanitary sewer that was developed for the you know the manor house and some of, and, and and some of these outbuildings will also be expanded. Um, to uh, connect and, and collect all the, uh, uh, you know, the sanitary waste from those buildings. I, I do note, however, when you take a, although there's a, you know, an, an expansion of the footprint and so, you know, requiring some, uh, you know, distribution and, and transmission that will, uh, 
uh, service all these uh, all these uh, the new buildings. There is a when you look at the uh, uh, you know demand on the property as, as when you compare it to what was used for daytop, uh, it's basically the same amount. In other words, as far as water supply, uh, day day top day top day top was uh, withdrawing uh, approximately anywhere from twelve to fifteen thousand gallons a day as part of their um, um, water supply and discharge uh, for the sanitary sewer uh, sanitary sewer system. It will be about the same for this when we take a look at what the demand are for these units and also the um, um, also the country in. So that uh, so I provided some information in this uh, um, initial submission uh, to the town that reflects those uh, those calculations and uh, and an assessment. Um, in addition to that, there's. Uh, um, uh, uh, like I said, there there will be a uh, um, you know the need for uh, drilling of a new well to meet the uh, requ requirement from the health department. So there's actually uh, two or three locations that are shown on this plan uh, for, uh, for for that potential. <coughs> since there are uh, since these um, two uses, you know, so the multifamily and the country inn are going to be on two two separate parcels. It will require a share of services, so there'll be appropriate um, legal documents that will be uh, drafted and um, you know supplied, as, you know, ongoing as part of this application, to uh, to allow for that um, you know uh, share of the of the water and sewer facilities. Let's see. Um, Oh, uh, with regard to uh, with regard to site access, uh, site access there will be some uh, minor changes. Uh, this uh, access road on the uh, north side of the property, it's actually it comes in at a at a skewed angle to Acrocook Road. Uh, in order to allow for safe access on this north end from Acrocook Road, it will now en enter Acrocook Ro Road, uh, hit a perpendicular. And, um, and at, at a location where you have adequate sight distance, uh, both to the north and to the south. Similarly, uh, the access, the existing access um, further to the south on Accurate Hook Road will now be moved uh, a bit to the south to allow for uh, safe access again, both in the north and south direction. And this, and the location of that will actually requires some minor disturbance to uh, to a wetland. Um, it's actually defined as wetland H uh, on this plan. And so uh, included with this these application materials, uh, which I'll get into <coughs> after the, this uh, um, description here, um, it, there'll be a wetlands application with it. So there's minor disturbance <coughs> associated with this. And the only other disturbance that's anticipated, once again, trying to uh, develop this plan in such a way to minim minimize any site disturbance and disturbance to wetlands. So you have this small disturbance associated uh, with that new entrance, and then also with the um, with the existing road that's going to be utilized. It needs to be um, <clears throat> needs to be widened in order to um, you know to, to accommodate uh, requirements for the town requirements for the for access. So there, that's actually. Uh, crossing a portion of uh, wetland A. So there's a small wetland disturbance uh, associated with that. Uh, those are the only two um, disturbances that are, uh, that are actually anticipated. Um, also included uh, in the site plan is there's a, you know, I provided a, you know, area and bulk analysis for this uh, entire site. And I just, you know, just overall, the you know the overall rationale in, in developing uh, the, these two these two uses the country and one and also the the multifamily is it just uh, once again conforms with uh, the town of Rhinebeck code with regard to development and another uh, development of the multifamily and assessment of the allowable number of units so the uh, all the calculations have been done to um, <coughs> to provide a basis for 
uh, the, you know, this, the, 20, the 28 units to be located on here. So we took a look at the town requirements for multifamily and did all the net density calculations to, uh, to support uh, those number of units. Uh, there's a brief schematic that's shown here for, for the clusters. Um, uh, the clusters will be uh, two bedroom units um, um, and they're noted, uh, there's the, the, the number of units that are proposed are noted in the application um, uh, and, and for both uh, the multifamily and also the, uh, for the um, <coughs> proposed country in one. And uh, I just want to add just one note. Um, it is because it's gone through, as the board knows, we've gone through a few iterations with this project. <coughs> so um, all the documents uh, note that it will be 28 units. I just note I, I, I have one error on the map here. I just, it's, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> well, one that I saw right away. Uh, for, uh, I've, I've labeled the, the, the cluster units, the location of them, and it's actually, I have three here. It's actually, it should be four. It's number, it's number one, it's cluster unit number one. So it is, it is in fact uh, 28 units that are being proposed. Um, I just wanted to provide that brief outline uh, for the board, so if there's, board has any questions, and certainly um, here to answer any, or and Matt and um, George also. Mark, I have one question, and it follows on a discussion we had earlier today. Right. Does the country inn include or not include a restaurant component? There is, um, there, Matt, maybe you can help me with that. <clears throat> it does not include a public restaurant. Uh, there will be a kitchen, and the kitchen will be used to serve breakfast for inn guests. And there will be no open to the public restaurant other than that. Only breakfast? Correct. That, I believe, is what the, uh, the document indicates. Mm -hmm. Right. That's correct. Right. Okay. Right. One, other, one other thing that I forgot to mention <coughs> is, in, so included in, in these documents, uh, also, uh, you know, in speci specifically in the EAF, um, there was no indication for a required requirement for a variance. And I would like to add that the, uh, there will be a requirement for a variance. And in this case, I, I should have got into it with the uh, you know, proposed uh, uh, water supply, is that the, you know, I, I, mentioned the, I mentioned source on the water supply and I mentioned transmission and distribution. Uh, the, the one other component, especially on a project like this, which is important, is storage. So there's an existing storage tank. They're old stone uh, storage tanks that are located at the top of the hill here. But they are, uh, they're in inadequate for, for the amount of storage required. Uh, they, they do need some repair and they don't provide, they aren't set high enough. The elevation of that storage tank is not high enough to provide adequate pressure for the project. So what's also being uh, proposed <coughs> as part of this project is an elevated storage tank, technically a standpipe. And so that standpipe will exceed uh, the 35 foot height um, um, restriction uh, per the zoning code. So we will need to make application for uh, area variance for that for a standpipe. Mark, uh, again, based on what you just said in our discussion earlier today, um, just informing the board, it's my understanding that the uh, if the board moves forward with the seeker resolution this evening, uh, seeker beginning the seeker process essentially, uh, the board will require that the EAF first be modified uh, to add the, both the ZBA and the State Health Department as uh, permit, uh, potential permitting agencies. And secondly, uh, that the draft that I had provided to the board uh, in the notes of the NOI will be expanded to also include those two agencies within the distribution list. Uh, yes, there's, um, Woody, go ahead. I have two, what I consider major concerns. Water and surge. Mm -hmm. Yes. As soon as this becomes two pieces of property with multiple owners of properties around it, it becomes a community. The town of Rhinebeck got stuck with Cove Road with a surge plant that the owner walked away from. The town of Rhinebeck had to pick up the tab. 
I want to make absolutely sure that Rhinebeck has no piece that they have to in assuming the owner walks away for whatever reason, both water and sewage, that legally the town of Rhinebeck is protected, not like it was down at the Cove, because it cost them over a million dollars out of pocket from the town. Understood. Which may mean Duchess Water, Water and Wastewater Authority. Wastewater may be part of that solution, and uh, I will certainly uh, reach out to Water and Wastewater Authority uh, as we proceed. Uh, I, I, you know, obviously, applications need to be made to yeah. local health department, state health department, um, um, and uh, New York State DEC, not for water supply, uh, but for uh, sewage disposal for the. Uh, uh, for the sewer treatment plant. There was actually, it, it will require a, a new application to DEC. There was a permit that was in place for yeah. the sewage treatment plant. It expired. So a new per permit has to be uh, applied for with New York State DEC. But so my, my, my concern you, is protection of the town right now. Understood, and it's noted. And your second? You said you were two concerns. Well, water, water one, sewer. Oh, water, okay, sewer. Okay. One, okay. Two. Yeah, one, Same issue. One does follow the other, more or less. Same issue. Back, no pun intended. <laughs> of course not. Uh, back years ago when this first was proposed, and I don't know if this is good, maybe for George or maybe for Matt, there was a discussion about the uh, condominiums also being registered with some sort of a rental vacation agency whereby the owners could rent these out. Uh, not necessarily Airbnb, but maybe this was before Airbnb became so popular. Is that still part of the plan? Is that still uh, part of the thinking on these? I assume these are mostly meek weekend homes, things of that sort, I'm guessing. And that maybe isn't true, but I'm guessing. And um, is it, uh, I think that's a concern that I've heard expressed in the community that this might just be an expansion of country and facilities uh, through the condominiums themselves. George that's not part of the plan uh, the plan is to, rent, to sell these to homeowners right. to be used by homeowners uh, as, as they would normally do the homeowner association uh, plan the HOA plan has not been prepared but mm -hmm. uh, whether that would prohibit that or not I don't know at this point but at this point, the plan is to sell to homeowners to be occupied by, by homeowners. Okay. And there would basically be no relationship between those homeowners and the country end? No. So there's no, no. rights no. to No, we use recognize the those end. as separate uses, separate, potentially separate owners. Well, certainly separate owners. Other questions, members of the board? I have one, one question. Uh, I, I was looking at the division of the two lots <laughs> and it was really confusing and <laughs> so the the country in one is like surrounded on three sides by the 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 28 unit Correct. parcel so I'll give you a, so it's not to bore everyone here just to give you a quick snapshot of the the rationale of developing that. So it goes in, Sharon, it goes into development of the <coughs> account for the country in, excuse me, for, for the uh, multifamily. So part of the town code, there's a formula in order to establish the density. And so certain lands need to be removed from that. And those are lands of certain mm -hmm. slope, wetlands, wetland adjacent areas. Okay. Uh, those are the three criteria. And so, uh, in development of the 20 acre, and so then there's a 20 acre requirement for country in one. The, I utilized the lands that made a conforming lot for the country in one, and utilized those lands that could not be included as part of the net density calculation. So that's, so that's, the, that's what drove the configuration of the country in one parcel. I was trying to follow it out, and I gave up. <laughs> it's gerrymandering. <laughs> oh no, come on. <laughs> Other questions? The, um, the existing uh, sewage treatment plant, That's uh, what level of treatment is that? Uh, right now it's tertiary treatment. Tertiary so, treatment. So it's, uh, 
you know, there's a, 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 it's, it's a RBC, Rotating Biological Contact Plant. Okay. And then uh, there's actually a tertiary treatment, there's a filter on the end of it. And so um, that plant will be, it's, it's been evaluated. It's, it's, uh, um, How long has that been running? Uh, let's see. So it was, um, it was upgraded in the late 90s, I believe. Uh, I'll, I'll, you know, it's been. Okay. And how much is ex expansion is anticipated for the new project? Uh, the, the plant is actually designed and permitted for 27,500 gallons a day. So, actually, help me out here. How many people is it? Well, and so what's being proposed for this project is about half of that. So actually, yeah. uh, actually, what the and, and and so there'll be engineering in order to. Um, because it's you know half of the flow, there'll be some engineering involved in order to biologically load those uh, you know the, the plant correctly, so that we so enough enough waste is going through the proper uh, the plant properly and, pro and being properly treated. So it's 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 not a question of not being able to handle it. It's it's how we're going to manage the, the half the flow going through there so it operates properly. And um, and I would note there was. You know, the, just review of the health department records. There were some, there were some odor. You know, before when Daytop was operating, there were some odor complaints, and those were prior to uh, 2001. There were some odor complaints, and what it amounted to is, so at the head of this plant, there's there's a it's called it's a surge tank, and so all that does is it just buffers any of the peak flow, so you have a constant flow running through the tank. That wasn't covered, and so uh, the current operator covered it. And then, and, and so after 2001, all the, the odor complaints went away. There weren't any more odor complaints that were on file with the health department. Obviously, as part of this project, the entire plant will be, we'll take a look at the entire plant, um, you know, meet all the current regulations and, um, and, and, you know, any modifications if necessary. But that's all part of the process, is to, is to go through and evaluate it and redesign as necessary. But the, but the basic bones are there. It might be helpful for the board to know also that um, Hudson Valley LLC has kept the operator on board, so for these whole two years, it plans have been maintained and mm -hmm. equipment operated. Mark, the spa is still in the proposal? Yes, it is. Now, is the spa an amenity of the country inn or an amenity of the condominium? Well, there are two recreational facilities. One is the homeowner's recreational facility, which is in a form of maintenance building, which is surrounded by the condominium units, and that's a condominium owner's facility. And then there's the spa that's down by the road, which is existing, existing chapel, and that's labeled on the plans and in the documents as a country in guest spa. So the condominium owners will not be using that spa? Uh, um, no, they would not. That's correct. Okay. It's, for, it's for guests of the country and, okay. and labels as such. What's the nature of the homeowners uh, facility? What sort of recreation will they be uh, performing there? I don't think, I'm not sure that's been, de been no. detailed, but there'll be steam rooms and, and treatment rooms and a pool. Are we talking about pool? Pool. Yeah. And then some outdoor, some outdoor things. But, but in the area central to the units themselves, clustered with the, with the residential units. Anyone else? Is there anything else you need to know from us before you go back and try to actually put the applications together? Well, it was hopeful to be able to <coughs> at least start the process with the town as far as uh, circulation for a lead agency to under seeker under seeker to you know to gather uh, to gather that you know comments from you know, involved or interested agencies, and then um, you know just more inf armed with more information. Uh, to go uh, and, and complete the design on this. I'll also note that um, we had a, a pre-application meeting with New York State DEC uh, to, you know, prior to this meeting to, to go over any, um, you know, items with DEC and approvals and, and their view of the project. Okay. So, and, and we'll also continue to do the same with the other, you know, involved agencies. Well, I do have a draft here, <coughs> which I will read and see what the planning board thinks about this. Michael, actually, uh, Michael and Moore, do you actually have, you have a draft 
procedural resolution, which basically is the planning board's uh, classification of the actions of Type 1, declaring its intent to a service lead agency based upon having the essentially primary uh, responsibility or the broadest jurisdiction with respect to the project. Uh, and attached to that is the uh, uh, a draft of the secret notice of intent that would go out to all the interested and involved agencies uh, subject to those uh, the little tweaking that I talked about before adding a couple of agencies etc so the the draft resolution seeker resolution procedural resolution stands as it is uh, through paragraph 5 I have an addition when you get to uh, the end of paragraph 5 and there's a new paragraph 6 okay well I will I will get that far and then it's up to you the Town of Rambic Planning Board, in consideration of a May 15, 2017 submission made by Charles Blakeman on behalf of Hudson Valley Rhinebeck LLC, hereby accepts for purposes of its review and initiation of a secret compliance process a document entitled Rock Ledge Rhinebeck Planning Board Permit Application Submission, setting forth a proposed developmental program consisting of a 12-room country in one and a 28-unit multifamily residential condominium and related site and infrastructure improvements as the two components of the reutilization and redevelopment plan for 136 acre National Register Historic District property at, one four, at 492 Ackert Hook Road within the Countryside RC5 District. One, determines the implementation of the proposed development program will require permits, approvals, compliance, determina determinations, and other authorizations from a member of town, county, and state agencies, including the grant of subdivision, plat, and site plan approvals, issuance of special use permits and wetland permits, and other authorizations and compliance determinations by the Planning Board. Two, Classifies the proposed action as a type 1 action in accordance with Article 8, ECL, and Title 6, Part 617.4 NYCRR, and determines such type 1 action as a matter subject to the conduct of coordinated environmental quality review by a designated lead agency. In consider three, in consideration of its permitting and approval responsibilities in the matter of implementation of the proposed development program, determines the planning board to have the broadest permitting and approving responsibility as Hudson Valley Rhinebeck LLC pursues implementation of its proposed development program and thus declares its intent to serve as secret lead agency for coordinated environmental quality review. Four, in its intended role as secret lead agency, further directs the planning board clerk with the assistance of the town planning consultant to distribute or otherwise cause distribution of the next notice of intent to serve as lead agency under seeker with request for comments to each of the potential involved and or interested agencies and persons set forth on the distribution list set forth therein with pertinent accompanying documents to be provided as noted. Five, requires the applicant to make available to the planning board clerk the required number of copies of the Rock Ledge Rhinebeck Planning Board permit application submission to affect the above cited distribution. Prior to doing so, the planning board requires the applicant to revise the EAF to list the ZBA and the New York State Health Department as involved agencies. And then paragraph six, further requires the applicant to file a copy of the submission of, of the submission at the Star Library and the Morton Library and if possible establish a project link on the town website. Okay. Could I have a motion? Uh, excuse me, Art, I'll also I no, I just wanted the one change. I'll yeah, but, one you change. know, when you put together the package. Yeah. Okay. Distribution. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. moved. Second. Any questions? I'll pull. Uh, yes. Yes. Why the requirements to uh, post the information in the libraries? Uh, because uh, what, two, two, two factors involved. Uh, one is that the, uh, the town hall, particularly the planning board office, extremely busy, and uh, people come in looking for you know, looking for documents when it goes through the file. Uh, that's one to to relieve the pressure on the planning board office. But secondly, uh, to make those available the documents available uh, at the library, which ha which at the libraries which have hours that are uh, more extensive than the hours of the no, planning I, board. I get it. But uh, I've since I've and, done and we've done that before. Yes, we, we have. Did. We have. We, did we did have. We've we done it with John's project. Remember, the gardens. Gardens. Triggered, is, a, is a size thing that triggers that requirement? Yeah. Well, it was the complication. We did it with the gardens as well, and they yeah. made the materials available in their sales office okay. because there were so many neighbors that were interested in the project, mm -hmm. and simply going with yeah. with the, the office staff here it limits the availability. Yeah. So, so it's based on our our perceived. Uh, and you know, and, you know and there are there are folks who are weekend residents and things of that sort. And I believe uh, I believe there are some Saturday hours, at least at the libraries and whatever, that are are, are not uh, are not here at uh, present here at Town Hall. It's really an effort to make it more available to the public. And the these libraries just volunteer. They say no problem. You can we'll take care of that. On Russia, they just people. make it available. Right. I mean, yeah, it's, it's okay. 
Yeah, it's routine that documents be filed. Uh, I know with projects that I represent, it's routine Thank that you. we uh, would be required to file copies at libraries and other places. Any other questions before I poll the board? Before you do that, just for everyone's information, uh, and I think uh, also I believe we're still on. Oh, know, I think so. Uh, I just want to indicate that um, this is a fairly broad distribution. Uh, it'll be going to DEC, uh, county health, obviously state health, uh, the town board, town highway superintendent, town ZBA, all its potential involved agencies, interested agencies, uh, Army Corps of Engineers, State Parks and Recreation, Office of Parks and Recreation, uh, New York State Ag and Markets, uh, Dutchess County Planning, Dutch the Town Conservation Board, uh, the Town Historian, the Town Z Zoning Enforcement Officer, uh, and uh, to, the, to the Board's consultants. Anything more? I'll poll the Board. Richard? Aye. Woody? Aye. Eric? Aye. Edna? Aye. Recused. Thank you. Oh, I figured it out. Sherry? Aye. Melody? Aye. And I vote aye. So, um, I, I guess... I need to know the number of uh, documents to provide. And um, as, as I did, as I've done with other projects, um, if, it, if it's acceptable to the board, I just provided proof of... Uh, I'll ship every... Just, just yes. an effort to help the planning office. I shipped everything to UPS and provided copies of proof of, uh, of shipment to those to those agencies. Is that a, is that acceptable or? or Does he want a uh, copy of this now? Uh, yeah, that that would work. Uh, Mark, you'll see, and just uh, you'll have to confirm this, but I believe just quickly looking at the uh, uh, when you get the uh, the notice in revised form. I believe that there are six involved. There are three of the interested agencies who will be receiving full documents. Uh, a parks and Recreation kind of planning service. So that's nine. Um, let's see, I already have a copy. Uh, Morris is going to need a copy. That's number 10. Two for the libraries is 12. One. I would say I would say you have to make up 15, and that should uh, should cover the requirement. Okay. And. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anything more from the planning board? No. Woody? Sure. Yeah. Motion we adjourn, but I would like to have, when we close the meeting, I have two items I'd like to bring up after the meeting. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> very good. We stand adjourned. Thank you all very much. Excellent.